compromising with what hurts inside I, inside When you let fear decide your fate You don't choose which path to take in life In life Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is 2022 KIC Honor Kings International Championship Grand Final. And here we are. I'm today's caster, Tianyu. Nice to see you again. I'm your caster, Isaac Peña, and we are live from the Shenzhen Bay Sports Center here in Shenzhen, China. We're bringing you live the final between Wuhan Easter Pro and Foshan DRDGK. I mean, it's finally happening. We yes. have been waited for exactly 38 days. Mm -hmm. A lot of battles, countless fierce one competition, amazing competition has been going on. And here we go, the two of the best team from KBL, obviously. Exactly. Look at that. It, we had 13 different areas, 26 different teams coming from those areas that they battled since day one just to try to make it to this stage. Sadly, for most of them, they did not make it, but only two are going to be fighting today to take their hands on their trophy. And these two from the top side, top half, will be the representative Wuhan Nisa Pro, yep. one of the best team from KPL. Mm -hmm. And from the bottom side, Foshan DGRGGK just magically made their way through to the grand finals. I know, I know. I know for the two of them, it's going to be a completely different scenario, right? For Wuhan East Star Pro, they're trying to put their hands into their eighth trophy. Wow. They've already won seven trophies and they want to make it to eight. And if they do that, they're going to become the team with the most cups in the history of Honor of Kings. But you know, by the side of Fush and DRGGK, mm -hmm. I would call it they are going back home because they usually yeah. perform the best during the championships. Not the league. They're probably suffering and struggling between the best four, best six, but they always perform so good during the championship. They actually won it too and went to the grand final last year, KIC 2021. So for Foshan DRGGK, it's not going to be anything new. They've already made it to the final before. Of course. They're two completely different teams, right? I would say that Star Pro is a little bit more aggressive. And Foshan DRGGK mm -hmm. right now, it could be like the underdog or the surprise of the tournament. But one strength for them is that these five players have been playing in one same club for a very long time. Yep. So the teamwork, the coordination will be perfect for them to try to perform. Exactly. And I'm totally sure that they are in the hotel right now just trying uh, to get focused and just trying to understand what's going to happen and how to get their strategies set up for today. 
Nora was with them to the morning, just kind of like checking on them. What about if we turn our eyes to Nora right now and then we check exactly what happened? Hi everyone, I'm Nora, 2022 owner of Kings International Championship. Finally, the grand final is going to be held tonight. And that's going to be Wuhan Yuzhou Pro play against Foshan DRTGK. I'm just being so excited to witness who's going to be the champion for tonight for 2022 owner of Kings International Championship. And now we're arriving at the hotel and let's have a look how the preparation is going on from the two teams. All right, first we're going to have a look at我现在已经开始了，突然间，我们刚，我觉得我们开始，我们开始，我们开始，我们开始，我们开始，我们开始，我们开始，我们开始，我们开始，我们开始，我们开始，我们开始，我们开始，我们开始，我们开始，我们开
in the history of our Honor of Kings competitions. Talking a little bit about Wuhan Easter Pro, they're a very aggressive team. They know what they're doing. They're very able just to start snowballing small advantages in the early stages of the game, and they just snowball them into huge leads in the late stages. At the same time, they've got the top players in most of the positions in every single place in our competition. At the same time that they've got great coaches, they've got the coach with the highest winning rate in the whole history of our game as well. What about we talk a little bit with the players just to know how they're feeling and how they're preparing for right now? Hey boys, how are you doing? Nice, nice seeing you, nice seeing you, nice seeing you. All right, so let's talk a little bit about tonight. What are you thinking? Is it gonna be a tough match? Is it gonna be an one more day at, at work? What are your thoughts about it? As long as we are going to be performing as our usual level, we should be fine. We should be fine. What should be the biggest thing that we need to be careful about and since minute one of the game? And it's going to be mostly just our details, right? Like how we can just try to excel at our own game. Now, there's a lot of people watching this abroad, new people that they're new to the game. What is the main thing that you like about this game and why did you decide to become a professional player? Uh this whole spirit of esports is what makes people just to feel the fall in love with our game. At the end of the day, that's the one thing that everyone wants to be is completely just in love with the game. It's just that feeling of that esports spirit. Well, um, each of us is going to be introducing one hero just for everyone that is watching at home right now and then you're just guys are going to explain a little bit of why you think that that's the best hero that they, that this game has uh, uh, <laughs> let, 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 let me take that one real quick, let me take that one real quick. Okay, so we've got Lady Sun, Yan Jie, and we have Marco Polo, and mostly because all these heroes can carry, right? What about you, my guy? Uh, Guan Yu, because Guan Yu is just like a very, very, really cool hero as well. Favorite hero? Uh, I would choose Mai Shira Nui, because it's a really cool hero as well, and it can deal a lot of damage, right? What about you? Favorite hero? Uh, oh, nice. Prince of Lanling for the support. And what about you guys? Uh, uh, yeah, favorite for how is going to be Lam, one of our top junglers and one of our top assassins. Well, boys, thank you very much for everything that you guys have done for us in this KIC 2022. I'm part of the fans, hoping that you guys are going to have a great performance today. Really looking forward to see if you can become the team with the most trophies. It would be amazing, all right? Thank you very much, everyone, and I'm going to just let you guys have a rest. Have a good game. See you. All right, thank you, Mule, for doing this, giving us those very good informations from eStars. And right now, we're standing outside, right outside the war room from DRGGK. I mean, for this club, they have been go through a lot for this year. They usually perform the best during the championship in the league, and hopefully, they're fully prepared for this. All right, now, just follow me inside and see how they're going to do it for today's matchups. Finally, like, 
they have been going through a lot, magically make it to the grand finals. And here we go, they are basically on fire, exercising, hand, having their hands warmed up for a little bit. And here we go, the very first member, we're going to do a little bit interview. Say hi to all the audiences, and this will be Bai Shou. So Bai Shou, how do you feel about today's? Very easy. Very easy. What's your goal? Like grand finals. World champion it is. I love. I love this kind of confidence and moving directly to Meng Lan. What's Meng Lan doing? Meng Lan, you're doing what? I'm playing a game. Meng Lan, now you're nervous? I'm not nervous. Repeat after me. I'm, uh, I'm very relaxed. Learn, learn, learn. I feel relaxed. I feel less. Oh, very nice English. Looking forward to see your performances. Hello, hello. Hello, Hello, so my own goal, my all purpose is performed good during the plays. And the next one, the support, Agai. We have done a lot of interviews. You're there simply just copying answers from each other. Like, uh, they have been going through a lot of very serious tournaments, so while they have some different feelings, uh, 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 eight, I like eight score. That's very high. 80% of the confidence they are going to be the winner. Happy. Happy. Like they have like Pong Pong personally have a very deep bond with Hua Hai. They're very good friends, very good buddies. So how do you feel about finally challenging your best buddies? Except for Happy. Chula Kaising Jin Yo Mioshima flag Xiang Li Xia. Yo Mioshima Dan Sha the Xuan Yan. Uh uh no. Uh. Play safe, play nice. And lastly we're moving towards the our main coach. Wow, you're like share with us, like how do you feel? You feel how? Uh, it's good. It's good. Uh, it's good. How long did you do this match? Uh, from the So I was asking how long have been the been preparing preparing for this grand final, and ever since they won the last fight, he has started to do the homework. So very heavy load of homework here, and here we go. I think our time is about to finish because they are all ready to go up to the stages. So. Ba, uh, last but not least, best information. Good luck, boys. 加油,加油,加油,加油,加油,加油, good luck. See you on stage. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, bye-bye, bye-bye. Let's wait the battle to begin. Really special fan, uh, like, uh, which is your favorite team? Uh, it's that pro. Uh, and uh, is it like your first time to be in a, a fly arena? Yes, uh, this is my first time to be here to watch such a a uh, huge ceremony and I'm really a big fan of Hua Hai. Um, actually, I am come from Australia. I, I just graduated from the University of Sydney uh, this year and, and I would like to uh, support my favorite player uh, here. So I, uh, so I just came here. So actually, like you fly all the way long from Australia to Shenzhen, just want to support your like, favorite team from Insta Pro. Yes. Yes. Right. So, is there any like words you want to give to your favorite team or to Hua Hai? Um, I just want to say a really simple uh, sentence to Hua Hai. Um, you are the best jungle ever, and I will support you forever. Oh. Yeah, Hua Hai, uh, fighting. Okay, really thank you and I um, hope you can enjoy our tournament tonight and uh, we will have a little small gift for you and just thank you for having our interview. Thank you. Okay, so her favorite um, team is Wuhan Insta Pro. So, who's your favorite player? Uh, who's your favorite player? Uh, 
So her favorite um, favorite player is Yi Jun, and she just hope that she can um, saw that Yi Jun can have a lot of MVPs and hope like see him can have a lot of highlights for tonight. Uh, 那最后的话，对于武汉 ESA Pro 有没有什么想说的话？嗯，希望他们可以金婚五人组能继续拿更多、更多、更多的冠军。啊<笑>、uh, ，OK， 嗯、um, ，So she want to say something to Wuhan Super Pro is that、um, she hope that Wuhan Super Pro can have a lot more champions and saw them to see them that have a lot of highlights. Thank you for having us. At the interview we're gonna have a little present for you. 啊、uh, ，谢谢，有吗？啊、uh, ，小姐姐是中文采访还是英文采访？啊、uh, ，好的，那我可能需要一些时间翻译一下。好的，呃、uh, ，那想先问一下，你是支持武汉 ESA Pro 还是湖南 EJK？ 支持 ESA Pro。啊、oh, ，OK， 呃、uh, ，那你是第一次来到这个线下吗？看线下比赛？啊、uh, ，是的，是第一次来线下。OK， so it's her first time to be in a offline arena、uh,。啊，那你现在感觉怎样？哦、oh, ，现在感觉很兴奋，很激动。嗯、uh.。Um, so it's really excited to be here for her like first time to witness an offline arena. 那你在赛前有没有什么想对武汉 ESA Pro 说的话？嗯，我希嗯，我希望武汉 ESA Pro 可以呃发出发挥出自己的实力吧，努力的向冠军冲击。然后小青龙妈妈爱你， oh. <笑>可以拿下他的属于你的第二个 F M V P 吗？好的，呃、uh, ，so actually like she hope that Wuhan Super Pro can have the champion and perform their best, and also she hope the mid laner from Wuhan Super Pro, which is Qin Rong, can have the chance to have the second FMVP, and we are really excited to witness if that can happen or not. 啊、uh, ，感谢你接受我们的采访，我们有一份小礼物送给你，谢谢，希望你享受今天晚上的比赛。Okay, so, 呃、uh, ，小姐姐你是呃都可以啊，嗯、uh, uh, ，英文和中文都行。Ah, uh, good. Uh, 那想先问一下，你是伊萨的粉丝还是 GK？ 嗯，好。So my favorite team is uh Foshan GK. Yeah, and my uh favorite uh player. Oh、uh, yes, my favorite player is uh Peng Peng and Bai Shou. Yes, I just want uh they can do the best, and whenever they do, the their fans always love them. Oh, that's so sweet. Uh, and and is it like your first time to be here in the like the studio or in?、Uh, This uh this studio is the first time, but uh I watched the earliest event in Longhua. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. All right. So did you saw that night like um, for Shen Jie GK play against Weibo? Are you there? Yes, I'm in there. Very excited. Yes, and the they very like uh do the best and calm down and just uh. <laughs> like、uh, take down more towers. Yeah, okay, so、yeah. I really hope that you can enjoy our tournament tonight. And thank you for thank you. having our interview. And we're gonna have a small present for you. Thank you. Ah,、uh, okay. Ah,、uh, Chong Chong Ah Chong Ah English can you? Ah Ah Chong. Ah, okay. 啊、uh, ，没关系，没关系。嗯、um, ，and so actually, like our first question is that is it your first time to be in a stadium, uh, to watch a tournament? 这是你第一次来线下观赛吗 ？Yes, it's my first time, and I'm very excited to be here. Um,、uh, my favorite, uh, team team is Foshan DRG JK, and I very like, uh, Qin Feng, Bai Shou, Mo Lan, Peng Peng, and Ah Gai. <laughs> like everyone, every each one of them. Yes, yes, and I think,、uh, and I think it's a、uh, time to, for them to have the champion. Ah, it's their time to shine. Um, okay, so is there anything you want to say to them, like before our tournament just kick off? Um, long, anything. Uh, there are a long time for them. Uh. And, 没事，中文也可以，没关系。嗯，就是莫兰、鹏鹏、金峰、阿改，还有百寿，你们已经努力了那么久，那么久，经历了那么多挫折与困难，但是从不缺从头再来的勇气。我相信这是你们，呃，就是能够，嗯、呃，拿到冠军的非常非常近的一次机会。我相信这次我们我们一定会拿到冠军。釜山第二队 J.K. 加油！
Okay, okay, we will have a little present for you. Thank you. So, uh, for Shenzhou UGK, this team have been waiting for this chances for such a long time. So she, as a fan, really hope to see that it's going to be the night for for Shenzhou UGK to win the championship. And she just believes in their behaviors and hope that they can do their best for tonight. And we are really looking forward to the tournament for tonight. Let's just wait and see for this time. All right, back to life, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. We are alive for We're the alive. grand final to kick off. That's it. That's it. We've been playing for such a long time, and we are ready. The audience is getting on the stadium. The players are already online. Everyone is just waiting just to get this started. I mean, from the mentality from both teams, I'm yeah. pretty satisfying. You know, they're all okay. They're very relaxed, yeah. ready for the battle. But, you know, when it comes to detailed, like, statistics from mm -hmm. both teams, they varied a lot. And when it comes to, like, earlier, like, former experiences, like, East are all the members, they have a lot of times. They have been wanting through to a lot of grand finals. Adding together, it will be, like, 20th or 30th or something. I do believe that it's <laughs> going to be difficult for, for Shandi RGGK in mm -hmm. terms of that, right? Like, the five players in here, this is going to be only their second final. Of course. It's going to be just the second time that they're going to be here on this gigantic platform and it's going to be for a lot of them the first time that they're going to be in front of so many such a big audience audiences will be a huge stress you know because we have been shooting or having those battles competitions yep. without any audience sitting down below mm -hmm. so once you hear the scream once you hear this kind of voices oh it's like it's a completely different it's thing completely overwhelming I agree completely. Mm -hmm. Just the energy that we're going to have here from the audience, yep. the energy of everyone that is here right now in Shenzhen, China, that is going to give us that complete different feeling. Wow. Just look, this? At, look at the data right here on the, on the board. This is really intimidating to see. Like for yep. E-Star, like they are basically surrounding every single Full one pentagon. of the quality you can possibly think of. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like wow. they, have a wider, they have a wider pentagon, a yep. different figure that they have right mm -hmm. over there. Um, mostly the biggest advantage that you can see in there is in terms of KD ADA, right? Like yep. 9.86 against 6.25. But you know, I've been talking about this forever. Like, yep. you have already proved that you are the best teams. Mm -hmm. We are not competing who will be performing better during the finals. Yeah. Like, whoever felt more relaxed can do their best while probably going to be the winner for tonight. It is a completely different game. It's completely independent mm -hmm. from anything that we have been doing during the season. Mm -hmm. um, we, we always talk about, like, how for, for Shanti RGGK, uh, for them, just this kind of short tournaments, mm -hmm. this kind of short cups are way easier than these long-term leagues. You know, for the RGGK, like, making to the grand final, I think it will be a result I would use unexpected to yep. subscribe because there's a lot of very good and very strong teams in KPL trying to compete to the grand finals. True. We're seeing Wolf, we're seeing Beijing, Weibo, but you can see how they grow in, as a team. And, like, they are, like, one, two, three behind mm -hmm. for that mm -hmm. series mm -hmm. in the semifinals. But unfortunately, like, magically, they make those impossible possible again by gaining to the ultimate battle and winning it by slating the whistle. And we're just looking forward for their performance today, expecting that they're going to do something similar. Yep. Regardless of who's going to take it today, like I know that there's audience in, uh, at home that they're for Wuhani Star Pro, there's audience at home that they're going for, for Shanti RGGK, mm -hmm. but whoever that is going to take it, we just expect to see like a great performance coming in from both teams. Of course, like they're fully ready. If you can like make sure you can handle that kind of pressure yes. in the semifinals, you're definitely going to be prepared for this. You don't compare their former experiences because like the best and the deepest that they have will be dated back one year ago, which mm -hmm. will be like 2021 KIC final, where they are defeated 2-2-4. Two, two, I'm, I'm sorry to bring this up by yeah. Wolves. But here we go. They are challenging another but great Wolves team. But Wolves is not here anymore. Yeah. You see, and that's the thing. Wolves has just got into semifinals, just lost to Wuhan Star Pro. And for Shandi RGGK, they just made their way just by taking Weibo out of the road. Oh, and these two core players, I love the story for them. Mm. Like, they are good buddies, like best friends in and, the entire league. And that's really good because they came out at the exact same time. Me too. Yeah, they yeah, had yeah. the exact same path. Mm -hmm. They come in in the same moment to the league. They become professionals at the same time, go to two different, completely different teams, and they've grown into what they are right now, top 
junglers in our game. I'm becoming the leadership for that. They're yep. representing certain spirit for that team. Mm -hmm. Like three years ago, will be the exact time for these two players joining the league as a very fresh generation. Yes. And times after time, meta after meta, you can see they are growing completely into a complete new adult, a more professional player. Do you remember when Hua Hai was came to the Little final kid. in 2019? Yep. And we used to just say like, okay, Hua Hai just like the youngest person in the whole E-Star Pro, and look at him right now just becoming the core of the team. Time flies. It's been, what, three years since that final? This is one good thing to be an eSport fan. You got to see the personal growth for these individual players. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Well, talking a little bit about their game styles, completely different game styles between Wuhan Eastar Pro and Wuhan DRGK. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Wuhan Eastar Pro, they've just told us exactly how this patch is supposed to be played. I know that everyone at home analyzes their games. I know that the other coaches are analyzing their video because they want to understand how do you get to gold lead out of no kills, out of nothing? <laughs> and then two minutes after, they've already got a thousand in their bag. I mean, there's no certain way to describe what kind of gaming style that yeah. put in one word to conclude mm -hmm. because they varies a lot. They are excelled at any single meta hero, meta pick, meta competitions. Yeah. That's way, what makes ESR such a great team, right? They're they excelled at every single thing. Yeah. They're basically handing over the answer of certain meta to all the audiences, to all the teams True. that this is our like understanding of the certain meta and mm. just follow our leads. We'll be the one teaching you. So Whenever that you don't know what to do, just go back home and just watch one <laughs> Easter Pro game and then you're going to understand what you're doing wrong, all right? Yep. That's super important. But like GK, I mean, they figured something out. You yes. know, this my players, I've been talking this for a long time, like they stick together a whole, I, I could even like think about the exact number, maybe over two years till now. Yep. Like Pong Pong have been staying in GK forever. Like Baisho will be one generation, but he has a lot of things going on and you can see those personal growth from every single time they get. And I have to sometimes like asking how they're feeling about this. Yes. Like Baisho personally answered me like, it's I'm gaining nothing by being nervous. I'm just going to enjoy the There's whole nothing. thing. There's nothing that you can gain from, from that. Yep. Believe me. That, those nerves, that stress that they're feeling right now, they just need to transform it into gasoline. That <laughs> energy that they're going to need if they want to build a wall to stop these five players from Wuhan Eastar Pro from coming in and take their crystal. And if they want to become a tank and actually push forward to take the victory, to take that W, they're going to have to come up with some crazy strats. I mean, personal limitations are there, lying there, waiting, yep. waiting mm -hmm. to be exceeded, right? So you make your own steps. Like, by so far, getting to the grand final will be Fortune DRGK's best records. Yes. And today will be their opportunity trying to renew the record by they, becoming the champion. They have to. Whenever yep. that you make it all this way through and then you make it all, all the way to, the, to this platform, you're on stage and then you are ready for this. Of course. Oof, like you need to do your best. Do not leave anything in there. Do not leave anything behind. I just like lasso for those players, enjoy and leave in no regrets for yourself because this will definitely be a very one and only very precious memory for your entire life. The audience is ready. The seats are getting filled by the minute. We still have people coming in. And then remember, we are going to start with this final right after this opening ceremony.
나머지 판도 다 이, 이기는 거 보여드리도록 하겠습니다. 我希望在我的当打之年波斯人能够来一个试杀有机会跟蓝队切磋一下我的我的我的我的我的我的我的我的我的我的我的我的我的我的我的我的我的我的我的我的我的我的我的我的我的我的我的我的我的我的我的我的
燎原白斩。总决赛的队伍，武汉 e s t a r Pro， 对抗路，坦然。势如破竹，长驱直入。别喊了，王天敌，这个坦然一夫当关，万夫莫开，打到第二个大招。兄弟们，天下无敌。和最后一个敌人，都是自己。努力永远不会被辜负，曾经的眼泪永远有价值。在七进劣势的情况下，他站出来了。Like dominating the whole game and trying to ma manipulate.
，目标只剩一个。清风的中午，堪称是 GK 的定海神针。First ultimate r o b o t i c Yeah. Incredible. Okay, amazing people. 若事有神明，亦会胜他半死。发育木，梦兰。觉得梦兰有想法，直接回家吧。好强，不能这样啊！游戏结束了。梦兰比起她以往的操作方式，她的高光镜头比我们认识中的她少了很多。对，但是她在我的眼里闪闪发光。改这名选手，只要玩到比较能出节奏的游走的时候，会给到对手极大的一个压迫感。越老越妖啊，打得越久越厉害。天，恒星的哀嚎，他在祭献最后的烛火。准备好，一战成名吧！莫言语，且看那翩翩少年郎，驾四海，御八荒，天高海阔平月，追风逐日，赛凤凰，恭喜 Easter Pro！ 他们同一年出道，所有人都听过东海西鹏，但赛场从来不会给两个人相同的答案。这支队伍，他们拿过太多的冠军，太多的观众已经习惯了他们的强大，所以在他们表现好的时候，很多人很难给到太多的认可；但当他们表现不好的时候，也许会给到特别多的指责。我并不觉得我比别人差在哪里，我只是没有冠军而已。捧神杀神，有人落井下石，但让他们失望的是，现在这只伊斯达就是无可争议的大魔王。啊，还在训练，一三零刀马摩天带刀人七刀二十还在打，这波单杀关键现身，哇海！他们是你能在这个联赛里面看到平均年龄最大、首发阵容最久的五个人，这不是热爱，这又是什么呢？
很难理解那种一次次导弹决赛舞台上的痛苦。有评论说，这几年来，迪斯大是笼罩在所有队伍上空的雾，现在只带你们摸云见日。说过要一起拿下所有的冠军，现在就差这一个了。从我有选手踢两个，谁先走？亲友这五十分，你打二还能杀一个？个人能力。亲友还在追，逼出了腰高的进化。再一个上阵，最后一个选手，火龙输出了，这波亲友，不知火龙再次上线，一波融化。看比赛这么多年了，让人印象深刻的辅助也就他们两个人。能留住吗？英雄战狼留住吗？来回来，来回来，留住了，不能钻进去哪里来的什么意难平？都这个时候了，你只能抛开一切，不管是荣誉满身，还是求之不得。我只是你们生活的碎片，在一次大，我才是完整的自己。Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your time to wait for such a grand final to begin with. So finally, with no more time waiting, here we go. The final one, the last year seven you're going to see for 2020Q KIC. Let's waste no more time and let's just put our eyes in here on the live. We are ready for this. You can already see the players. Look at him. He's already just moving his hands. He <laughs> wants not only to put those hands on the mobile, he wants to put those hands on the trophy as well. I mean, this is their fixed goal. Yeah. I mean, there's only one more trophy missing for mm -hmm. this five players standing side by side for ESR. Will be the KIC champion. They have hold the trophy together. We have six big and huge tournaments in the year of 2021 to 2022. Yep. And adding up together, it will be counting down to six grand finals. And ESR Pro is is there every single time. Every single time. Wow. Eastar Pro just makes it to the final. That tells you already something about what kind of a player they have, about what kind of a team they are. Not only the players, the coaches, the team, when you see them, when you walk into their war room, when you walk in the room, when there's the five of them all together, the ambience is different. And you can feel it. This is it like a hometown for Hua Hai because he will be the winner. He is yep. the winner for the very first KIC dated back in the year of 2019. The only one person on stage that has won the trophy. Wow, only one. Only <laughs> one out of those 10 players that they're going to be performing today. The only one that knows already what it is to be the KIC champion, Hua Hai. But they're competitive today. like. Take a deeper look for Shanti RGGK. I mean, their best horse will be performing on this exact same stage. Yes. KIC 2021. They have their regrets. They have some unfinished business there. And they don't want to go out to, through the back door tonight. Of they course. want to come in and then just go out through the big door with a trophy in their hands. Because a lot of those players, when you start just start talking and thinking realistically about their careers, they're coming to an end. Yep. I'm so sorry to put it out there, like for a lot of them, this might be one of their last opportunities that they, they have to come up and just finish with a trophy. You know, I love that sentence that Baisho was telling us during yep. the interview and during the video. He like, I don't think I am like weaker lesser. or lesser than any is existent like player at this current meta, at this current league. I'm just missing one more trophy and this will be it. He's just missing the trophy and sometimes when you start thinking about history, history is always going to remember those people who won the trophies. The history always remembers the winners, the victors. Sadly, no one keeps their eyes too long time on the second places. 
no runner up is going to come here and is going to make a, a, a name just for being the second place. If you want to write your name on the books of history of Honor of Kings, you must come up today and really do your best and come out with four victories out of our BO7. I mean, I'm sad to say this, but winner will always be remembered. Even though you struggle a lot, you have overcome every single challenge and make it to the yeah. grand final. Mm -hmm. But if the result is simply a second prize, I'm sorry. After tonight, no one's going to remember this. We only memorize the prize for the top winner. You're going to fight for the number one. So huge stress there. But for DeAndre GK, I mean, hopefully, the best wish for them, trying to remember how resilient they have during the semifinals. It's been a long way for Foshan DRGGK just in the road to the final. They started in the KPL Regional qual Qualifiers round one, winning 4-2 against one draw TTG. They took that victory and make it to the group stages where they just finished first place of Group C to earn their spot to quarterfinals where they won 4-1 against XYG and that semi-final between Beijing Wave 1 for Shanti DRGK. Amazing, amazing. Incredible game finishing with the one and only ultimate battle that we've had in this KIC 2022. I mean, for that every single like seven matches that in, in total, yep. you can see how resilient they have. You can see the perseverance from their mm. actions. They stuck here for a lot, like one, two, three, this three points below, like behind your enemy, that's a huge stress. And that's the like, best thing to know that they have the ability to overcome that kind of stress. Composure, Yes. composure. Whenever that you are behind, you just need to remember the one and only thing that you can do in here is just to take your faith in your hands and try just to be the master of your victory. Try to be the master of your faith and then just drive it all the way until the top. What about the road to East for Eastar Pro? I mean, Eastar Pro, do we need to explain more? <laughs> We've been talking Woo! about, like, trying to lift up your expectation for those very strong teams. Eastar Pro will definitely be the first one, yep. the name of the team that we're going to be mentioning, right? Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm, introducing mm -hmm. guys, for those of you who are not so familiar with the league, with the code KPL, like KPL, that Wuhan Eastar Pro will be the names we kept mentioning during the entire 38 year, like, days. Exactly, for <laughs> Wuhan Eastar Pro, they did not participate in any region qualifiers as they were just seated straight up to the group stages where they were in group A taking that first place, right? Like, in simpler words, mm -hmm. there are six great tournaments in the year of 2021 to 2022. Mm -hmm. Six grand finals. They're there, uh, they're in the grand final every single time, not to mention winning themselves four champions, including one more secondary prize. And that's it. That's their scores. Imagine five finals, <laughs> four trophies, one runner up in one year. <laughs> like a lot of teams are just dreaming with the opportunity to once in their career just to try to make it to the final so they can try even just to be here on that stage. Let's put it right there. Like the other rest of the teams are trying to compete to be the challenger. Yes. Challenging mm -hmm. against the ESR. This is how powerful and how strong ESR is in the existing league, and hopefully they can do a great job today. They are fully prepared, and believe it or not, like Foshan DRGGK, after they won that match going against yep. Beijing Weibo, they started to do their homework. They a lot of time, a lot of countless hours of doing this. The only one team that has <laughs> been able to win even a game, not even a whole match, a game against Eastar Pro in this KIC has been Shanghai EDGM, EDGM in EDGM. quarter finals, right? Mm -hmm. The only one team, they come to semifinals, take Chongqing Wolves four to nothing and send them back home in what everyone was expecting was going to become the final. I, I really love the story of GK that these five players have been stuck in the same club representing GK together for a lot of years. Yep. And one year will be very costly and very precious for an eSport player. So you have to have faith. You never give up, no matter what will be the challenges you're heading up to. I mean, they have been overcoming a lot of challenges. A lot of people are doubting, you know. You are old enough. Yeah. Are you having a, the fastest respawn speed? And that's, and that's the problem in here, right? Like, we love e electronic gaming. We love professional electronic gaming because it just takes away all those physical things that you need to play basketball, to play soccer, to be able to be good at American football, how to be fast, how to be strong, how to jump higher. And electronic gaming just erases all that and puts it just to your brains, mm -hmm. to your dexterity. But you get to a moment in your life where you're already competing with kids that they're six or seven years younger than you. 
what can they do? Bravery, perseverance, Bravery. faith, and the desperation, hoping to become the champion, brings them to the final stage. And here we go, the very first game, game one for this entire series. And the blue side will be Wuhan Pro, and the red side, their opponents, will be Fortune DRDG. Oh, I'm already getting hyped for this. <laughs> this is going to be fun, I'm telling you. <laughs> the BP is what's going to define this. There is no other thing more important than this BP. You know, this will give you the answer. What, yes. like, ease are having prepared for this mm -hmm. to fix composition. But in a way, we're not talking about Gongsun Lee. We're not talking nope. about any other <laughs> meta heroes. We just want to make sure this very meta composition, this fixed formation, will be banned away. Like, if you do not allow them just to have that fixed combo, those the combo that you could have with Machao and Aguto, or the combat that you could have with Guan Yu and Kai. Like, if you destroy that, then you're just putting the ball on, oh. on the other team's, on the other team court. They're not Who hiding strategies. No. Like, it's so What's obvious. Not? Like, putting everything, they got mm -hmm. the best card they got, Maisha Nui, over to Chain Round, best place. Yes, yes. Someone needs to carry. <laughs> and in this combo, with that Maisha Nui, our eyes are gonna be on Chinron since oh, minute one. I love it. And since Hanyang is just releasing his new personalized design skin for Lu Bu, yep. it will be always a best beginning for you to use this Lu Bu as a very first game during the entire series. For Foshan DR GGK, their choices are gonna be Zhang Fei, Gong Sun Li, and Zhao Jun. It's good. It's looking good. Like, Qing Feng will be the best player. Play one Zhao Jun, Zhao Jun. Yeah, best performance but, like, in my personal opinion. Yeah, personal yeah. opinion. I'm sorry to say this. Yeah, in a personal opinion. I do believe that Qing Feng has been gigantic on Zhao Jun. Just the ability, how he's been able to use Wow, this that guy is like a GPS. <laughs> true. It is true. I, li I like that. The man just got a GPS right over there and he's landing his second ability so easily. Like he's basically chasing and tracing up mm -hmm. to where you're going to be landing. And obviously that Zhao Jing will be a counter pick. Yeah. A countering towards Lu Bu because yeah. you have a fixed assassination of your ultimate. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. once you're landing there, you either use your flicker and your flash to avoid this. Yeah. Avoid being frozen down or otherwise you will be the target. The accuracy that they're going to have in that frigid prison is going to be very important in the, for Foshan for DRGTK to try to stop a little bit of Panran on that Lu Bu. The bans from Forza and DRG GK, no oh. lamb, no jing. Wow. Completely just narrowing down anything that Huahai could pick for a jungler. But you know, there's a, oh, still a lot of choices because mm -hmm. it's only game one, even though we're playing <coughs> global BP. But eight, game one, if you do not have lamb and jing, it's okay. Yeah. And since like Yao is being taken away from the table, I think they're looking for those assassins. Yukio touch button might be the choice. Yukio will be good, yeah. But, you know, if they are stuck to Yukio will be like one shortage coming out with it. They are sh very short-handed. Mm, they're, you, going, they're going to be on melee fights yeah, all the like, time. Yeah, like you need to form up <gasps> those long-range damage. Nakururu! Wow. Jeez. Like Let's go. Like game one. Just straight up. This is just Easter Pro. Oh. This is why these guys are in every single final. You come up and then we start thinking like, oh yeah, well, you kill Tachimana and they're then like, no, <laughs> burst damage. <laughs> Take them out. All right, all right. Things not going to look, will be finalized. Yep. It will be locking in for Huahai. We all know like the best partner for Nakodo will definitely be like Sha Holdun or Ata yep. because they are very aggressive, very protective of their own jungles. Will be having those abilities, trying, trying to make sure that Nakodo will be having those jungles mm -hmm. and blue buff to his sides. But they're using Liu Bu and Lumber trying to secure down the first round of the jungles. I mean, early game invasion might be happening since like DRGGK level two, they're more aggressive than Definitely, then he's a pro. They're completely, they, they have the first two minutes completely for them. And this is going to be the ball on their court. There's going to have to be them making the decisions on what they want to do with that. Mm -hmm. Do they want to really risk it? You do not want to be losing fights. Yeah. You do not want to be given an advantage in the first two minutes of the game. So, what are you going to do? I mean, fairly speaking, if they are determined to do the invasion, trying to steal those blue away, yep. if you fail to do so, I have to assure you guys, if you put some shortage, put it in front of Wuhan Isha Pro, they will just give it yep. and translate <laughs> and hold, transfer it to their own strength. Okay, okay, okay. So the, the combos are already done. 
the picks ha have already finished. Uh -huh. Let's start just taking the spotlight on who you think that is going to be the carry oh. on both sides. Who's going to be carry? I'm going I'm to be putting my money on Mongland. <laughs> Kung Sun Lee, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm going to tell you, man, like, the, it depends completely on what Mongland can do on that of Kung Sun Lee. Of course. At the laning stage, like, he needs to be able to be, number one, needs to be solid, cannot just be dying at all. He needs to be farming. And if he can just get the turret and get out of there before, before Deer and Deer, that's, go that's gonna allow them just to take control of the mid lane. I mean, the picking of Gong Sun Lee just tell you the information that they have faith in Mengland. Yes. They're picking this kind of very upper limit, like hero to Mengland to play, trying to be exiled at one point, which will be the laning phases. Mm -hmm. So we all know like Gong Sun Lee will not be a good answer when it comes to late game team fights, yes. because he's very vulnerable and very difficult to find a proper place to do the damage in late game. So probably early game and mid game is what the Fortune Dear GK is looking for right now. Game one. Game one. They, they they just need to go for it. They need to go for it. They do not want to push it to the late game because if you push it to the late game, Hua Hai's damage Aww. and Taran's damage. Of course. Tiron's damage. E Tron's damage. Like, come <laughs> on, man. Like, do not push it. Do not push it. This is going to have to be Wuhan e Star Pro trying to be really stable at the beginning mm -hmm. and trying to make it all the way after 16 minutes. Can Foshan DRGGK try to seal the deal before that? That will remain as a mystery before Enemy everything happens. So let the battle seconds. begin. The game won within the whole entire series. That's here, the crowds. Okay, thank you for your positivity. Hopefully, it will be directly transferred to the team phase. Let's wait and see. Let's wait and see what's going to happen. It started as a 3v3 over there in mid lane mm -hmm. first, right? And right now, Mongline is already on level 2, and he knows that he needs to get out of there now. Yeah, th this will be the definite answer. You wanted to put Gong Sun Lee in the mid firstly, yep. trying to secure down the priority of the wave, and <laughs> then move back to the bottom, trying to make those very efficient rotations. Oh, look at that. And it's going to be Team Phone sharing both waves with Monglan. Mm -hmm. That's just, just going to give Monglan a little bit more of the advantage. Super core, like yep. super centered. Everyone understands that. <laughs> Everyone who knows that we depend on Monglan. Let's wait and see right now. Nakururu, Hua Hai is just cleaning his whole jungle. That's he a good news. Not, he did not even try to come in for the sprite. And right now, Chirong jumps in just to try to check on the oh. red. They come in and it could be the first fight. Papa is taking extremely low. He's trying to run for his life. The chip, it comes in. The prison is going to throw us two people, but the damage does not follow. It's going to be first blood for Wuhan Easter Pro. I love the entire rotation. You can see like Chino is basically chasing after where Mulan is going and trying to get the vision of where Fortune Theory GK is going. Those centered and they have that exact information so that they can make their uh, invasion into the red. And like I see, the red is in Yang right <laughs> Now. It took Pompa <laughs> so long time to get that red done. I mean, for Yao, like before he reaches to level four, getting yep. the ultimate hit will be extremely weak. Mm -hmm, this mm -hmm. will be the one chance that E Star holds in trying to make it to gaining themselves the very first blood. Well, right now it's gonna be the E Star Pro, the ones that they're gonna have oh. control over the game. A guy is still on level three, so he cannot engage. And Nakaruru is just going for that tyrant. This is a complete turning over. We assume that Fortune Dior GK yes. will be having those aggression moves in the early game, but turn out to be like they're losing the red and losing the very first blood. It will be a huge loss to Dior GK's competition. And let's see what Dior GK wants to do. They want to reply back, trying to come in and just keep an eye on that red buff but they do not have the damage right oh, now. Hero. Trying to force Agai to use his ulti, but he just jumps out of the fight. I mean, everything is looking good for the side of Isa Pro, and DRGK is trying so closely to chase up to the pace. Like, yes. They want, don't want to go like any step behind their enemies. And right now that Isa Pro has eyes on the times for that red buff yep. coming up, that's going to be the next Q, 2, 1, red buff spawns. <laughs> and right now, e Star Pro is already online. Oh, I mean, Ziyang is basically standing there, getting the vision, waiting for the red buff to spawn. Mm -hmm. And since, like, Maisha Nui is stuck in the mid, trying to wait for the wave to come, yeah. so they decided just to retreat back to their own territory. Yeah, they have to retreat. They came in and they used uh, their ability to get oh, the fire. Oh, no, why comes in. The Fallen God is going to fall as well. Baisho has been taken to half of his HP. He's receiving damage from both Huai and Taran, but he needs to run away. Oh, nice diving in, though. 
you can see even though like Tanran and Huahai both use the ultimate, but it's efficient. They they're making that Baishou go back to the base and they're gaining two flashes. Yes. Like force in out from the RGGK's members. So right now that Baishou and Team from one half the flash, they're gonna become extremely vulnerable yep. for the next one minute and a half that they might still have on cooldown. I mean, it's a huge Disaster for Jaldrin because without a dash, yep. like Jaldrin will be making Rose the rotations very, very cautiously. Rotation Otherwise, to bottom. We'll be Look at that. It's going to be four against two. Agai still has his old. Oh. Look at that. What we just mentioned. Wow, like going crazy. Comes in and gets rid of Tim from the Wild Blood. Comes in, pushes back. The Falling God's going to follow, but Pompa is going to rotate out of that. I mean, every single member from Ezar is trying their best to protect each other. Mm. You can see, even though Nakulu will be brought very, very low, but use ultimate of time and trying to protect and trying to find a way to Huahai to go and back. And you just mentioned it, Team Phone without yeah. the flash is just going to be an easy target. Look at oh, that zero comes team in, on. fall in, one and two. Nothing that, nothing that Team Phone could have done. You know, a good result will always be the consequences of a very bad, like, perfect teamwork. Yes. So, like, you just have faith. You just believe that with this ID written, uh, written down there, like, Ching mm -hmm. Rome, you just believe that this Mai Shenu, you can make everything happen. Anything could be right now. Look at that. The red is still in half of its HP. Papa taking extremely low. Tiro is going to take one more kill. Tanran is just caught in between, taking uh, damage 360 degrees. Nothing is going to be lethal. Wow. Like, DRGGK really, really needs to make better move, better decisions. Oh, Trying to solve he wants more! Oh. Why comes in and takes Molan away? Now he's gonna have to pay his for his life because by show wants to take revenge. He's not going down! He runs away! He's not going down! I mean, the is basically on fire today. It's only game one. This is the kind of game that we were expecting, ladies oh. and gentlemen. This is amazing honor of kings. Look at that. Pumpo comes in, tries to take on e -tron, but e -tron is just going to have to run away. Like, beautiful. This will be the highest level of the competitions. This is what we're expecting to see the grand final teamwork. It like, so is decisive. Easter Pro just showing us how this is supposed to be played. Like, so Look decisive. Look at that. I thought that Wahai was just going to fall in there. Look at that. He's just been surrounded by three people and he's still able to run out of that. That second ability from Nakulu just managed to gain back a little bit of HP. Look at that. Tanran jumps in, but it's going to be wide as by show. He's going to have to ult his way out of wow. it. The mid lane turret for Fushan DRGGK is going to fall and that opens the doors for Easter Pro to come into the jungle. You know, not to mention that how well this player from Easter is doing, but they're avoiding to do the lane against the RGGK's yeah. most advantage uh -huh. line, winning lanes. They're avoiding to do the laning against Molan, so there's nothing that Molan can do. Farming up, farming up, they cannot just losing the gold instead of trying to chase up your enemies. With no laning, then Molan is still not online. He only has got Doomsday right now. He needs at least one more item to try to have a little bit of an advantage. This decision from the RGGK, this response is good. If they're continuing invading your red, just making sure that you can be outnumbering them. Bring every single member you can have for this minor skirmish happened down in the jungle, trying to protect your own resources together. Trying to protect the resources. They were able to take that red buff, but it's going to be for Pompon. It's not going to be for Monglan, as right now it's seven minutes of the game. I mean, the we're only thing in. that DRGGK will trying to do is like, trying to buy themselves more time. That will be the only purpose for DRGGK to gain more possibility of winning the game one. Yeah, but the more time that they spend the stronger and stronger that that E-Star Pro composition starts I mean, getting. I E-Star is literally giving them no options. Nope. There's no option for you. The only thing you can do is trying to slow down the pace for a little bit. They want to get this done. Shadow Ripper is going to be the next item for e oh, And I'm he's going to be, look at that! Oh. One more time, Tyrion comes in with the dash. Stumbles in, that runner is going to be Aga, the one's going to become the target. Armageddon puts him on air, by show is going to come in, it's going to save his life. But that second turret is going to fall as well. This will be personal talents, personal limitations. You never expect to see this kind of solo kill over there. Nope. They are like very distant with one another, even like Moonland does not see this coming. It is a Gunsu Lee, man, like how is this happening? Wow. That is one of the most mobile marksmen that we have and he's just being targeted one and again and again. And Look at Tyrion one more time, <laughs> finds the angle. 
comes in, Huaja is the one that starts this whole thing. Another oh. combo it is. Like Maishla yep. Nui and Nakulu together, they all did the like, second time for these assassins to cooperate together, trying to gain an official and very important kill to the team. The tempo of this game is crazy. Oh, Huaja, one more time. The target is going to be Tifo. He's going to pull his Splendor that is going to save him from this. The Winters here is going to be wide, wow. trying to defend the turret. But the minions are still coming in. That turret's gonna fall. It's very difficult. It's a close one. They're still waiting for Aga to accumulate the anger so that Zhang Fei will be having those ultimate very important to fight back during the team fights. Nothing that DRGGK can do right now. Take a look at the gold differences here. Wow. Like nine minutes, 5 0. -oh. Like 4,000 gold leading in favor of only one team, which will be Easter Pro. Everything is looking blue in the map. Eastar Pro has full control of the game. Wow. Already with a 4,500 gold advantage. This is looking bad for DRGGK. Extremely Nine bad. minutes and 25 seconds. Let's see what's going to be Eastar Pro's move. They have to try their best. There's no room for mistakes at this point for GK. I mean, they're clearly like Eastar can make those very like risky yeah. actions. They can take. Those prices cost when you're trying to gain more. The yeah. DIDGK, they have no room to make any single type of mistakes right now. 16 seconds for the Shadow Tyrant and for the Shadow Overlord just to come in online. That might be the next target for Wuhan Easter Pro. It's like this, like, start from the second, Qingfeng needs to stay safe, needs to stay alive. Like, Zhao Jun's ultimate will be the only thing yes. and only strength and method trying to buy DRGK more time into the late game. That's the only option that they have in order to protect their high ground. That's the reason why he made a Splendor yep. as a very first full <laughs> item <laughs> for Zhao Jing. Splendor was the reason why he did not die on that top lane yes. scrimmage. Mm -hmm. Because Eastar Pro had their eyes on to him. Mm -hmm. Look at this speed that they take that Shadow Tyrant. That's going to be the first one of the night. Wow. 10 minutes, nearly 11 minutes. And Hua Hai have already gained nearly 10,000 gold. <laughs> it is gigantic. He is a complete assassin right now in this moment. Look and at them. They're, they're going to go for double dragon. Double dragon advantage. They're going for right now the Shadow Overlord. And the stats, you can see like 804 will be um, the gold per minute for Hua Hai throughout the entire tournament. Every single matchup adding together the average value and data for this. The average value that that man knows how to create some gold <laughs> How advantage. to be rich. <laughs> like, he knows how to start snowballing things. Team Fon trying to protect the one in mid lane. Everyone from Fosan DRGGK, they know that they need to hold to those precious turrets. Eastar Pro does not want to push in too deep, waiting for the Vanguards to come. I mean, very nice move. They are sending different members to clean the waves instead of rushing into one certain direction. And right now, like, Eastar is waiting for the Shadow Vanguards, those Vanguards to rush in and march in on to the High Ground Tower, waiting to take at least one or two High Ground Tower in and this And the RGGK is just waiting, is holding to all of their ultimates. Okay. Because the fight is going to be online. Look at that. Let's put our eyes on that turret. The Shadow Vanguard comes in extremely oh. healthy. Liu Pu jumps in with the Falling God. The damage is coming in from every single one person. Aga is going to fall. Tirung is going to follow him as well. Throws All right, it down one, one more good. time for Liu Pu. Why I tried to reply back. Taking damage from the turret. He's going to fall, but takes a double kill before he's falling down. Like Meng Lan will be the only one remaining there and Lumber used whatever he can do trying to bring Ejin safely back to his sides. A lot of things are going on. It's a slaughter and a massacre down there, but Isar is still winning the team fights. But I think DRGGK has done a great job yes. fighting back, waiting for the right moment. Since Meng Lan's still alive, oh. will it be? Oh, it's very dangerous. It's so close. He thought that he could just take Ejin on a 1v1, but he was he did know that Ziyan was waiting over oh, there in the bush. Those combos, those ultimate combos. Like, that's the thing. Like, Ziyan falls extremely quickly, and that is the reason why mm -hmm. it's difficult for Eastar Pro to take on the turret. If they're planning to do this, like, Nakoruru and Maishanui together should yes. be diving in at the same second. Mm -hmm. So, this will be one little minor mistake from Eastar's invention. It's like Ziyan diving in, but Hua Hai is still a little far behind. Yeah. This might be the question, but the second diving in for Hua Hai, that's mm -hmm. amazing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Taran just jumps in a little bit too deep. Yeah. I believe that it was a little bit too deep, so the damage could not follow 
right after him. It's well, good. This is, like... gonna, this is gonna bite for Shanti RGGK some time. At least. Good news, definitely good news. But All right. one more thing missing from the RGGK, the team yep. fights, like Zhao Jin put the ultimate between the two high ground towers. Mm -hmm. So they are lacking those damages, the AOE damage, trying to slow down the pace a little bit. So they are waiting, just waiting for the next round of the team fights. Next round, look at that, it's only 14 minutes in the game. And this has been so much action. This is just only game one. It's on. But I think that good defensive strategies are pulling it out there because DRGGK is trying to make sure that three high ground towers still remain alive at a certain point. They're not facing the super soldiers. Nope. The wave pressure still remain the same for both teams. That's a good news for DRGGK. If you're losing initially in game one or in the very first minute, yeah. it will be always bad for you like to hear this kind of information in the late game. And right now, it's going to be the Shadow Tyrant that is going to go for Wuhan Eastar Pro. And there's already a countdown of 10 seconds down for that Shadow Overlord to be online. All right, all right. I think the pace is just slowing down for a little bit. Yeah. Since the Latin fight from East are initiated, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not that good. Mm -hmm. They need to wait for this. Yes. This is the cue. The cue is just to use the Vanguards to come in. They know that if the turrets don't fall without the Vanguards, for Han Eastar Pro, it's going to be difficult to make their way to the Crystal. Oh, and then you can see those warriors, Tyran and Nakalu, together at the same time, have developed an item called Pure Sky, which means that they will be having more time to shield those damage from yes. GK, manage to take and finish off the kill during the team fights. Pure Sky, I believe, is one of the most popular, best item. most of popular items in this whole patch, yes. right? Like most of the most of the people are just deciding just to go for Pure Sky as the option when you get over here already to 15 minutes. Like half damaging, half tankiness, I think it's okay. Yep. That's a great item to bot. Great. For the soldiers. Great value for the price. All of right, it. all right. Since all the flicker, all the flashes, and ultimate will be ready, E Star is waiting for the right moment. Ah, Team for one more time. He's going to have to Splendor to survive. But that turret on bottom lane is going to fall. Look but, at that. But by show. Oh, wow. Wow, that was close. Extremely low, extremely, extremely low. They did not even wait for the Shadow Banger to come in, and that turret did not stand the chance. Yeah, because the Ejin have the Twilight Bow over there. So it will like, extend yep. the range of his auto attack. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why he brought Baisho so low and successfully forcing out the flicker it is. Forcing that flicker out. Look at that, Monglan comes in. He pokes two times, so he's going to have to parasol his way out of it. The rotation to top lane. The turret is being taken to one third of its HP and it's going to fall down. One more time, look at that. Pompon comes in, takes Tyrus HP bar extremely low. Now the Vanguard is going to be the goal. All right, this will be it. Like Esar's purpose mm -hmm. of doing having this Overlord, having those Vanguards, is that they're aiming for the high ground towers and in return they get to making that the top lane and the bottom lane, they have those wave advantages when it comes to management of the wave. And right now, Ejin again using the Twilight Bow to gain as much as damage as possible. And that's it for right now. We're going to come down to one more time. It's going to be one minute and a half of just Easter Pro coming in and then just taking resources. They know that for the next 90 seconds, their goal is just going to be to take to the, go to the jungle, get their hands on whatever goal that they can get, wait for the Overlord, wait for the, for the, for the Tyrant, and this, then just make that last push. This timing is very important for DRGGK. You have to manage the wave, you have to rush outside. You don't want to stay forever on your high ground tower waiting nope. for your enemy to hit back. <laughs> Like, this will be the only chance for you to buy yourself some vision here. And finally, like, Pong Pong is very important because he's the one who is going to be responsible for the waste later on. Yeah, Mong Lan and Pong Pong right now already on the 12,000 gold yep. mark. Their damage is online. Look at oh, that Tyrion being taken Tyrion! extremely low. He's going to have to dash his way out of that one because that's that good. was bad news for Easter Pro. That's good. That's Molan. That's why the reason like DRGGK chooses Gong Sun for Molan to play. You just have to grasp this certain opportunity for you to turn Wahai. this high around. Yeah, that's positioning from Wahai. Wahai is really scary. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Team Phone just comes in and they just takes on that bush and he finds Wahai waiting in there. He was trying wow. to get on to something. Monglan being taken extremely low. He needs to go and get back HP from those minions. The Tyrant is going to go for Eastar Pro one more time, the third one of the night. Like, GK really tries. 
Like, they're not showing, being afraid of what's going to happen. Nope. They're accepting the challenge from each other. They're losing a lot of stuff, a lot of, like, resources from their own mm -hmm. initially. But if you take a look at the time, 18 minutes, they're waiting for the 20 minutes. As long as we can yes. see those Tempest Dragon, everything will be brought to 52-50. As long as they out. can survive the next wave uh -huh. of Bangers, because that Overlord seems to be uncontested. This will be the hardest be one. for Honey Star Pro. <laughs> If they can survive this wave, they're going to make it all the way to the other side. Of course. And then whatever that's going to happen is a 50-50 when the Tempest Dragon is out there. I mean, the next round of the Dragons will be the hardest part, mm -hmm. hardest time for GRGGK. If they manage to take that challenge, they will be stolen to, ten to, to fight for the Tempest Dragon. Monglan one more time comes in and they just keep poking and poking and poking, right? But that Lupu does not have that many defensive items, and he is not a tank, but he's a full-on warrior. Wow, E-Star is standing, the Shadow Dragon in the mid lane. Shadow Banger coming in one more time. Ultimate is pulling out by and trying to secure down to clean the waves. The Winters here is going to take that Banger, and all they're right. going to survive that first wave. All right, all right. I think they're handling it quite smoothly from GK. Yep. They're, find, they're finding the moment, they're finding the time, and right now they just need to try to do something. Try their very best to survive this next wave of dragons. Push it all the way to 20 minutes, 25 seconds away from the Tempest Dragon. It's okay, like competitiveness is, is what we're expecting from the yep. Grand Finals. You definitely need to see the Tempest Dragon, I hate to say this. It sounds unfair to E-Star, uh -huh. but it's happening, like magical happening. Like DRGGK is playing so passively, start the very first minute, very first minute mm -hmm. and a second, but they managed to do this. Now they're fully stacked. They avoid getting in touch and going to dive in into the Tempest Dragons right now. Final showdown. The showdown is here, ladies and gentlemen. Look <laughs> at that, everyone. We've already finished. Oh, yeah. Look at that, Tyrant extremely low. Taking him, being poked down. He's going to have to TP his way back to the fountain. I mean, Mulan is super core in yeah. this match, game one. This is, this is it. Like, you're only gonna have that Gunsun Lee once tonight, and this is your chance to shine. It is time for him to stand up tall and carry the team to the other side. That Tempest Dragon is going to be the key. I mean, he's the only one that he who can probably save the entire world for GK. Right now, the only member alive. Oh, Pompo comes in and he's gonna be put on air by the Armageddon. Pompo is gonna be taken extremely he low. He can run away. Look at that Tyrant is being taken damage from both sides. The but Tiro, look at Tiro. Tiro tried to take a mall and he's not gonna be able to do it. The Splendor's gonna save his life. Turn your eyes on Huahai right now one more time. Sage's entry is available, and right now one more kill to Nakabu, the only two members is alive with Qingfeng and Molan. Will they make it? Will they finally clean away for their team? It will be game one. Look at that, right now Qingfeng and Molan, the only hope, oh. the minions are in. White lights on his face, take that, game one, Wuhan Easter Pro. Beautiful plays. I mean, both teams did a completely wonderful job. No need to feel any regrets. You are doing pretty much everything you can do. I mean, the last thing fights, we are seeing Monglan trying to exceed the limitations. We are seeing like Pong Pong is using his body, yeah. trying to attract the attention, and he managed to go away. But sometimes, sometimes you have to give credit to those early game leading. Who's leading the game from the initial point will be the side of Wuhan Isa Pro. But after all, it will be amazing game tonight. It is good. After what we just saw, I am so hyped for <laughs> this to make it all the way to seven games. I want more of this. Give me more. I need this. <laughs> I mean, even though like we have the winner, we have the loser for the game one, but the whole arena, like the whole audiences are fired up at this point. We're so excited about this because every single movement, every single team fight, it's just worth the waiting. Worth oh. the waiting, grand finals. Believe me, last time that I saw an audience like this on a stadium like <laughs> this one, it was a long time ago. And this energy, ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you, you can feel it. It is palpable right now. Well, this is just the charm of esports. 
exactly. I'm feeling this kind of way all the time when it's Grand Finals, you know. Mm -hmm. You gotta soar all the vibes going on. You got so excited of the movement, of the beautiful diving in for those players. And I really need to express a gratitude for the players, team players right there. You're enduring a lot of stress, like all around. We're seeing the audience exactly. right below. You gotta be very nervous. You're really young, but you manage to take the pressure. Good ones. Let's Good talk job, a little though. bit about how everything just went on, right? Like because mm -hmm. Eastar Pro just took the advantage at the beginning of the game, the mm -hmm. first two, three minutes. We thought that it was going to be for Foshan DRGGK, but the way that Eastar Pro comes in and takes that first kill on the red buff, that is what put just the whole game in their way. Um, if you were name, like ask me to name one of the possible MVP candidates, we'll be like. Hua Hai. Hua Hai. Hua Hai. Yeah, definitely Hua Hai. Totally, totally. Hua Hai. Oof. So good. Initially, you don't just simply assume that Nakoruru to be play in this kind of way. You know, you don't see those no, aggressive no, 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 no. moves from Nakoruru. It's mm -hmm. like this will be a hero that we speak in of early game weakness. Mm -hmm. That's the first hero you're gonna be having up on your in your mind. It was like <laughs> 10 minutes and he was already like five kills. Yep. The man just went crazy on that Nakoruru. We were not expecting that pick for game one either. And you know, that team fight is really interesting. Sometimes, if you, our team, is performing this kind of composition, we will simply assume that Nakoruru will be the last member joining the team fights. He's waiting for those combos from those tank liners, right? Frontliner Lu Bu and Lambert at the same time. But no, he takes on the initial fight, first handedly diving into and giving the old burst damage, AoE damage to the back lines. And that's it, gaining the kills for the team. For Foshan DRGGK, they tried their very best. It's like their, their ability to try to protect Team Phone yep. and to have Team Phone's ultimate available was going to be wow. one of the most important things for them. Ladies and gentlemen, it's game one. It's the highest level tournament throughout the entire year, and you are competing with the best possible opponent you can have. And KDA 716 will be the answer from Hua Hai. It's not Easter that easy. Bro, Hua Hai taking that MVP, the first one for the man who I'm completely sure his goal for today not only is going to be the trophy, but he wants the final MVP. Wow, this is a showcase of I'm the only one who have won the trophy in KIZ. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is my place, you, you know. You guys follow me, I know where to go. <laughs> I know where to go, you guys just get behind me. Look at that, the first one, this was key. This was incredible. Look at the man, like, waiting over there in the bush. And he jumps in, takes Monglan away, and nothing that Agai and Paisho could do to try to avenge him. And magically survived. It's not like a <laughs> miracle there. Miracle there. Waiting for the cooldown of the ultimate to be activated again and making a little bit more dash to some, some place called safety. Yes, in this one, Tyran just jumps in, but he jumps <laughs> in a little there, bit too deep. A little bit too deep. I could not jump out of that one. Yeah. And then the, re the replay by that. Look at that. Wow, one this one. And two. The size of Boom. this. The size of this. I know, like he knew that he was not going to survive the tower, the tower damage. But if he's going to follow, he's taking two with him down. And sometimes you imagine that you are not using those very me meta heroes, you know, mm -hmm. as a two jungler. It's not a Lam, it's not a Jin, it's a Nakoruru who always considered to be oh, the secondary team three in this current meta. But that's the thing, like, you, we do not like to use Nakoruru because it just takes, needs so much gold, it needs so many different items. But the man ends up the game with 17,000 gold. We the, have to. At the pace that he was just building gold, at the pace that he was just farming up. We there have was to no mention one member from GK, like Meng Lan, Gong Sun Li, contributing to over 40% of the total damage. 110,000 damage dealt by that man. Like, oh. incredible. Crazy. Like, the best performance you can possibly think of for this one, because you're losing from the initial mm -hmm. point of the game. Mm -hmm. It will be extremely difficult for Mulan trying, trying to deal the damage, but he managed to do this. He tried his very best. Yeah, Everything really just tried. was for E-Star Pro. We can see it. They just held to a little bit of an advantage, and the only thing that for Foshan DRDGK could have just waited was that last fight. They needed to try to contest that Tempest Dragon. It was the only key that they had if they wanted to go through the victory. Door. All right, so this is how it's going to work. It's BO7. Yep. A lot of things might be happening. It's mm -hmm. only gaming one. So before it gets to level two, this is how the rule for KBL or KIC is. Like the one, the former loser for the previous game yep. gets to pick sides. 
So GK will be having those initiatives, trying to make sure which will be the side they feel most comfortable and most confident in. Yeah. I think it will be the blue side. No, they need to go for the blue, right? Yep. Like they need to take a little bit of the advantage. They need to be a little bit more proactive and really try to go and try to get as many heroes and try to turn this in game two. You do not want to make it 2-0, 3-0, because it's just really hard to come back out of I mean, one to one if it got a tie there, yeah. this night is going to be long. Mm. But if, like, uh, when Zebra managed to win the second one, I think the pressure is there. The pressure is going to be on them. Right yeah. now, I know that the Wuhan Eastern Pro and Fusan DRDGK, they're just waiting. They're just getting ready for our game two. I know everyone at home wants to keep watching these amazing <laughs> performances, the same as us. But first, we're going to go for a little break and we're going to be back with you in a minute.
All right, all right, all right. Game two, we are live. Let's go. Game one, E-Star Pro coming in, taking the first dub. For Foshanti RGGK right now, they need to come in and try to do something completely different. They played really well during game one, but playing well is not going to cut it out. Oh, you know, from my per uh, like perspective, I think even though like, GK got defeated in the very first game, but they, s they show those kind of potentials. Yes. That they can be a good challenger against E-Star. They have those potential and ability to win. And the second one will be extremely important. We talk about how you're going to be having those ties favoring your side. Mm -hmm. If you're running up like two points behind your enemy, it's going to be like huge stress. So right now, they're switching to the blue side yeah. while E-Star will be remaining on the red side. So the blue side means that they can take those <laughs> initiatives when it comes to the doing the first round of the bands here and got to pick the very first hero out. So they have all already used up a lot of heroes, including like for the, the, yeah, yeah. the side of East are like Mai Shin and Nui yeah, mm -hmm. and Lu Bu, definitely. Yes, like two, those two. Yeah, those two are what a cost. And for, and for, for Shanti RGGK, even though that they did not win, but they did not lose that many meta heroes exactly. besides, besides Kun Sun Lee, exactly, right? Exactly, exactly. And then Kun Sun Lee, even though it, they failed, but it's really, really good. So there's no like disruption on their personal confidence or whatsoever. Yes. I think they're fully ready for this. Now, right now, it's going to be very difficult for Yi Chun to try to keep his hands on that Kun Sun Lee. That oh, Kun Sun Lee is not, not going <laughs> to be out there. That's going to become the next pure ban that we're going to have from Kung, from Foshan DRGGK. Ooh, Huang Taiyi been on the second ban places right there. Foshan DRGGK. Do you want to leave Tats Hiao out there? I don't no, know. No, no, no. no. It will be the Tats for E-Star. So, ah, oh, they're taking those warrior composition. They're trying to show their trust towards one single member, which will be the member right now, yeah. showing the camera by show. By show. If they get their hands on that Kai, then we're expecting to see a Kai and Guan Yu combo. Guan Yu. Kai and Guan Yu combo over there. Let's see how Wuhan Eastar Pro is going to reply back to that. Hey. These two teams combining together, they're the best thing I can possibly think mm -hmm. of who play the warrior system so good. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's why Meng Tian as well <laughs> is not going to be... We're not going to be able to see Meng Tian during game two, three, or four. <laughs> that Meng Tian is going to start coming out in the late stages of oh, four my, or five. My e Star is saving a lot of very good meta heroes when it comes to jungler. Yes. The first one, Nakoru. The second one, Yao for Hua Hai. They're saving a lot for the future matchups. They know that it's a BO7. If if, if for some reason for Shandiar GGK are able to take this game two or game three, then Eastar Pro is going to have to start just taking out the big guns, coming I mean, out with just stronger, more meta junglers. Okay, there's an underlying reason for this. Like Yao, well, together combining with Ata will be a huge challenge towards aiming directly to the Guan Yu. Yes. So Guan Yu need to accumulate those energy bars, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, those mm -hmm. minor little CC chains over there will be a huge problem for Guan Yu. It's going to slow him down. Yep. And we know that by show, he's going to, he's going to need the speed to actually be able to have to deal some damage. Before mm. that, nothing he can he can be doing. Both sides decide to get the third, third pick on their mid laners. It's going to be Shen Mengxi and Zhao Jun. For this laning, I think Qing Feng is getting those advantages. When it comes to yep. range of the attacks, mm -hmm. range of the AOE damage, he's winning. Mm -hmm. Like the longer range it is. And if you to compete the speed of cleaning the wave, I think the two mages are all the same. Like they clean the wave very soon, yeah. very fast. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Sun Bin is going to be banned from Foshan DR DGK. Good ban. That, Good ban. Can you imagine if you allow Sun Bin to be on Wuhan yeah. Eastar Pro with that Yao and with that Ata? That would be just bad, bad, bad news for Foshan DR DGK. And they do not allow that Sun Bin in there, and they're not going to allow Tran Fei. And I like the idea that SK is putting a lot of efforts trying to restrict the performances from Monglan. Yeah. You know exactly, there's a lot of remaining marksmen right there, but they are using <coughs> all the places for bans, mm -hmm. trying to make sure that Monglan have nothing Marksman, any other kind of options will be not comfortable for Milan trying to get in, in line and doing the laning going against the Asian. So right now, look at that. If Lady Sun is a lock, no Dear and Dear, no, no Meng Yap. Very limited choices. Uh, what 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 is out there? Concert you? What is out there? Concert um, you like Milan have uh, on hundred twenty raid on Concert U. Yeah. But if you are deciding to go with the Concert U, I think the whole composition will be quite towards the late yeah. game. Yeah, it will be really dangerous. Concert U seems to be one. the option that Monglan wants to take. 
Let's see what he's going to pair oh. it. Oh. Prince of Landing. Chemistry. Mm -hmm. Good. It is good because in concert, you can just use her second ability properly to try to shield out some of the damage coming <laughs> in from Wuhan Easter Pro that allows Prince of Landing just to come in and uh -huh. use his ultimate and to deal more damage for Mengland to take on the kills after. I mean, the lock-in in a Prince of Landing basically is just Chao Yijin. There's no way you're going to be feeling yep. comfortable in this one. Mm -hmm. Like, even though you're banning these two <gasps> best marksmen Wait, together, but I have an answer for you. I Ooh. thought Tai Chen was going to be the clear answer this for Wuhan Easter Pro. This will be a counter pick, a very typical one. Since like a Prince of Landing, very special in design, he uh -huh. will be hiding. He will be avoided to be seen using other invisibility, right? But yeah. like Wei Gu's is ultimate, having the ability to shine and light up the world. They yes. are able to know where exactly this Prince of Landing will be like. This is a typical countering strategy. It is a great pick that Wei Gu's in there, like his second ability and his third ability are going to be completely directly countering on the whole strategy form for Shan DR GGK yep. in that bottom lane. So we need to just keep our eyes around the map. If they're not going to have a winning lane over there in the, in the bottom lane, then everything is going to come down to what Bai Shou and Pong Pong can do over there on top. So this is what's going to happen. As long as like Wuhan is able to get the vision of the exclamation mark from mm -hmm. Agai, they're just using all the abilities from Gui Gu. They're trying to make sure, yeah, we know exactly where you're hiding. Straight, straight, <laughs> straight up just like that. Like, if you just made that decision of playing that Gui Gu and playing it on Ziyang, the only player that, as a support, has won a final MVP, then they're just gonna have to just re completely depend on him. And like, like you said, the RGGK is changing the strategy, changing the gaming strategy. The yep. last one, the game one, they have two smites, two very aggressive early game, like tank frontliners trying yes, to yes. do the invasion. But since that failed, we are directly changing to a completely different strategy. We're trying to make sure the laning will be what really matters for this particular one. We're definitely gonna be winning, getting those advantages during the laning phases and Wow, GK need to grasp this kind of opportunity to their side. GK needs to do something right now. They do not want to go all the way to a 2-0. A 2-0 would be very bad for their goal of trying to put their hands on that trophy that exactly. is standing right over there on stage. Exactly. Oh, they are just becoming better and better every single time. We saw their places. And now, if you take a deep look and a little rewind for a little bit, you can see those performances from GK. You got no surprise why they will become in the best two. Standing up and sitting down in the stage up front, performing in the grand final for 2022 KIC. Let's see. Right now, it's going to be a lot of pressure on Yichun. Of course. Like, Yichun is going to have so much pressure because if you analyze the composition from Eastar Pro, Yichun is going to be dealing most of the damage. And if Yichun is going to be limited seconds. by that combo from Concert Yu and Prince of Landling, it could just put Eastar Pro on their back foot. Let's see how it goes. Straight in there, just put, sending Zi Yang back right over there. Just he could not contest anything in here. Wow, this is a, really a competition fighting over for vision. Like all the minor ability from those heroes will be able to sh light up the world for DRGGK. They're yeah. using the first one and the ultimate from Shen Mengxi from the Kitty Bomb. But you're gaining them some those visions they need. Yeah, of course. Like Im imagine um, all the damage that was dealt over there in the mid lane. Oh, this one is. The so Yang was just sucking in all of that. He he was sent all the way back to the fountain. After Look that. where Tyran is. One versus two, gaining the river sprite to his side. Good mm -hmm. ones. And the bottom laner, two marksmen, had to have. Like Monglan needs to take that laning stage to him. Like he cannot let that one go. And look at the rotations over there. Our guy just knows that he just needs to give the vision. His only job right now is going to be to give the vision at the beginning. Mm. The damage is not going. It's not going to be something that he needs to be thinking about. He just needs to be there to just provide some psychological pressure. Oh, little skirmish happened down there, tripping away those HP from these two warriors standing side by side together, sharing the same gold and same waves. 
And nothing's gonna happen as long no. as we can like keep track of where these two supports are. Mm -hmm. Where they're going to, to go will be the next like destination, so w where the team fight's about to, to Look at happen. That. One and two, taking half of Hua Hai's HP bar. Just letting him know that they have a <laughs> tracker on him. Zayang comes in, trying to take on Monglan, but Monglan's got his fourth ability already available at the same time as e Mm-hmm. Huge stress during the laning, but Monglan managed to take it, handle it quite smoothly. They have Surviving. eyes on the blue. Quahe does not have his, he doesn't use his mind. Just decides just to come in and take it slowly. You know, every single pace is happening like silently. Mm -hmm. Even though we're not seeing the first blood, but they're trying to get to level four with the supports, and it's happening. Yeah, and right now, like almost everyone has made it all the way to level four. Mm -hmm. So right now, like the first, the beginning of this game has been completely different to what we had on oh, game one. Look right. at that being frozen down. He still has his ult available. Look at that. Comes in. Chiron being taken to half of each HP. Pump Pump comes oh. in. And it's going to be Guy, the one that is going to follow now. And Zilian takes on two people. Why he wants to join in the party. He is coming in late. But now the target is going to be that blue buff. It's just beautiful combos. They are dis displaying all the possible ways to combo using the CC, yes. right? Like, together, Tyrant's ultimate, including Chino's ultimate band, to trick one person down. And then you're seeing those combos from Ziyang together with Chino again. That's something that's a hard work, the showcase of their results, being teammates all together. A lot of combo, beautiful movements are happening just now. Beautiful movements from both sides. We could say right now that Tyrant <laughs> is going to be taken to half oh. of his HP. Monlan needs to out his way out of there. Being completely targeted. It really requires a lot of time trying to be this experienced. Because like Monlan, the ultimate from Kansu Yi will manage to gain this hero one minor second of the purifier back. Yes. And that's what exactly happened. Like Monlan using the ultimate to escape away from the second ability from Gui Look at that, the RDGK, they have their eyes over here on this blue okay. box. Zhu Yang is going to be stopped way out of there like he was going to make his way through the rear but he was just completely red lighted in there now this is too like dangerous because you can see like from the mini map tyran is really really far from this yes and drgk is simply just waiting around for this guiguzu to show up this will be a huge turning point for drgk because once guiguzu is going down they earn themselves those breathing time trying to buy more stuff trying to buy more items Look at that, and now just Agai, the one that comes in. Huahai comes in, he wants to take advantage of that. The Racer Cavalry pushes him back. He's going to run away with his life because it was DRDGK, the ones that they wanted to counterattack. Well, look at those minor CC chains right mm -hmm. there. Like, by show is miserable. He's not, he's not having a, be a great game right now. Like, being tortured with those minor controls. It, it just takes so much out of him. Like psychologically, he knows that he wants to be part of the to be part of the game, but he cannot. Like he tries to jump in, but he cannot do anything about oh, it. Oh, very sensitive. He knows that there's some rotations back then, so it will be not safe enough for just standing under your tar tower. You have to make sure that you will stay in the relatively safer spot. All right, look at that. Out of sight, just the rotation over there to mid lane. Right now, everything is looking like the point is going to be here, the bottom lane. Hua Hai comes in. It's going to take the solo against Monglan, but it's going to be Aga coming in from behind. Oh. Taking Hua Hai extremely low. Can he take back? It's going to be a one-to-one -one trade. Yi Zhen going further, trying to gain a kill to his side, but unfortunately, the damage is not enough. Team Fung is going to reply back to that. It's going to be a two-one trade for DRGGK. Looking good from GK. Like Meng Lan is on fire today. Like they can, he can play uh, like actively. He can play passively. He can oh, try to make sure that Pong he stays safe all the time. Pong being surrounded by three of them. Frozen prison. It comes in. Winter scared. Invincible warrior still going to fall. Wow. Like he's are finally fighting back, getting one more kill in return, making it two to two. Making it two two. It was a long one. Yeah, it's a long it one. Took, it took them a little while. Look at that. Monlan uses his ability over there to shield the damage out. And then it was the cue for Hua Hai. He knew that he could come in and bring in the damage. Monlan did everything he can do. Did basically everything, single thing he can possibly do. Yes, of course. And then Xin Fong just being extremely brave. 
goes straight up into the, the Lady Sun's face yeah. and pokes him out of this. Oh, board. that's very dangerous for Kai. He's missing the spot here. No gold advantage for none of the two teams. We're a complete tie on 18,000, almost the 19,000 gold mark at seven minutes of the game. Like, Puma is very difficult to play in this particular game because you are fixed with this kind of composition, which means that you're a soldier, your warriors, your top lane will not be responsible for the whole vision. Like, Pom Pom needs to gain the vision by simply just standing and rushing back face to face to the bushes to find yes. out whether there's going to be enemy, whether it's going to be an ambush there. Look at so that by very show. Very risky. By show, just trying to take on the bottom lane turret at the same time that they just gave the one on top away. This whole game has just been a full mirror, right? Whatever that happens on top just ends up happening on bottom just straight right after we move. Everything's gonna happen. Like, both teams are determined to take this very high risky compositions. Look at the supports, come oh, on. So yeah, oh, with the flash comes in, wow. Monlan is going to have to dash his way out of there. The Kitty Bombs come in, take Siren to one third of his HP, runs out after using his ult to clean the wave. Yeah, but after like training the flashes, E-Star have to rush back because they have no vision on wherever like the Baisho is standing. So best move is to retreat back. And right now it will be DRGG Kaser. I'm trying to invade more to E-Star's jungles. They're going to take that turret over there in the middle. Mid lane turret is going to fall for E-Star Pro. DRGGK right now just open the door for E-Star Pro's resources. Yeah, this is a competition of gaining the vision. That's all. Those yeah. kills, those team fights is not that matters, not that important. Whoever got the more vision to who can just take full control of the map. And look at that right now, that Overlord is gonna go for E-Star Pro. Last Overlord that we're going to have before the Shadow Tyrant, the Shadow Overlord is gonna be online on the 10 minute mark. Fortunately, the RGGK definitely gonna be performing better job than the previous one. Like game one, very solid, very confident. Yeah, I, li I think that just having a guy on those um, very aggressive, very aggressive support options, it just fits really well for Foshan DRGGK. Mm -hmm. Clearly, it is one a very big risk when you're facing E-Star Pro. And let's see what will be the answer from Easter Pro. They have been struggling during this mid game for mm -hmm. a long time. Nothing's going to happen. And they're definitely going to be planning for their next moves. They're planning on what to do. Shiro and Taran, they just feel the presence from a guy that is just walking around. He's just wandering around the jungle, just letting them, letting them know that he is present. Yeah. Because we have, as an audience at Caster, we have the full vision. Yes. But if you were the players, you have no idea that where yeah, the Square Goods is, where the Prince of Landing mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. Every bush seems dangerous to your side. All right, Pong Pong getting to another safety spot, waiting for the blue to spawn. Siyang already with the Howling Emblem. That is online. It's going to be available in case that Eastar Pro would like to just start being a little bit more aggressive. Oh, Baisho is still missing from the map, and right now is showing himself appearance on the top lane. That's the reason why E Star rushes back here, though, they're going further because they know exactly where of this Guan Yu is. And they know that if Baisho is not around, like they could just come in and yeah. they try to take a little bit more aggression. Look oh. at that Huahai. It's going to be initiated by Agai. The Kitty Bombs come in, but they're going to be one. Oh. Huahai is going to survive on that ambush. Smooth moves. Using all the ability available, trying to avoid as much damage taken as possible. That's good. And Yellow is very special, you know. Yeah. He have those damage deduction built inside of this hero. So he'll be extremely tanky. Yeah, right. Like it's one of those heroes that they are able to survive again and again and again. Oh, Baisho is being slowed down. He tries to move out, trying to move around. He just saw the opening, tried to come in. Oh, but, but, let's see. Ah, oh. it was a little bit late. It's still going to be Huahai just putting his hands on that Shadow Overlord. You know, Isar is reacting to this very, very quickly. That mm -hmm. Ejim will be first hand and get in touch by Guy, but using with the cost of the Purify, I managed to escape away. Yes. And since, like, Lady Sun is not in a healthy H bar state, they managed to stall the time trying to make some, like, attraction towards the RGGK, managed to buy Hua Hai the time to solo kill and get in this Overlord. And look this at that, and right now they're going to rotate to try to oh, take on that Shadow Tyrant. The positioning Tyrant. from Guan Yu is very important. 
Aga keeps an eye over there. He knows exactly where everyone is. But look at your, the top lane. The Shadow Vanguards are already taking, putting damage on that level two turret. That that tyrant, that Shadow Tyrant is going to be for Eastar Pro. Nothing that DRGGK can do right now. But it's taking them a little bit too long time to get that, that one. I mean, done. the Vanguards is buying this turret a lot of times. Bump on rushing in, oh, trying Bump to gain a kill. He's sucking in so much damage from everyone. Agai tries to take oh, an so He's going to fall as well. Agai is going to follow in. Now it's going to be by show. Comes in, the deals damage. It's not going to be lethal. It's going to be a 2 1 trade for wow. DRGGK in terms of. It's going to be good for Eastar Pro. Like, Guy is losing the very tier 2 tier in the top mm -hmm. while facing huge stress of the ways there. But, like, since, like, Pong Pong will be one true target, the only thing you got to do is trying to make... Oh, oh Mola, Lexi, one Mola. more time. Wow, very dangerous. Very dangerous. Now it's going to be Hua Hai. Xinron just uses his dash to fly out of this whole thing. Ziyan comes in and supports him out of that fight. Those counter fight from the side of Eastar is really, really good. Mm -hmm. I mean, they tried everything they can possibly do to remain survived. And the appearance of Guan Yu is really dangerous. That spot. Yes. And I think that the problem for Eastar Pro is that Yi Zhong is the one that fell in that fight, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you do not want Lady Sun to be falling since you really need Yi Zhong to be able to deal damage. Like, without the burst damage coming in from Yi Zhong, I don't think that right now Eastar Pro has enough damage for them to be lethal. Yeah, this will be the question whether Yi Zhong can keep himself alive. Oh, look at that. Molan is being just shielded down and being taken down. It's going to be a one-to-one -one trade right now. It's going to be by show the one that is going to try to reply back. Yeah, those two marksmen cannot just stay alive during the team fights. They're definitely going to be the target to their enemies. Like Yi Zhong with two minute cooldown time for the Purify to wait. It's a long time for your marksman and for Molan as well, even though you have the ultimate and one more flash, but also the cooldown will be 20, uh, two minutes. And Eastar Pro knows that they need to rush this Shadow Vanguard. They need to rush this Shadow Tyrant right now. It comes to 10,000 of its HP, nothing that the RDGK is going to do. And right now, Eastar Pro building up a little bit of an advantage. From this time on, it will be very easy to understand who can protect their marksmen safely during the team fights. We're gonna yes. be the winner for the next team fight. It's that course. easy. Of course, of course, of course. Did you see how every single oh, item it was Prince just of will be spotted. all the way? He jumped by Show wants to jump in, but he's been slowed down by every single CC. Look, Look at Wahai Wah coming in from behind. Monlan spotted him. He's got eyes on him. Ballista's already damaging the bottom lane turret. I think we're missing some information here. Maybe when we're looking at the replay, yes, exactly. something happens. Gaining the vision, finally know exactly where Aga is. Returning this, like making Aga the target of the first like team fights. Mm -hmm. And once they have killed Aga, everything is going to be happening. That's the problem. Is Go that down they, the they road. Spotted, they spotted Aga just too early. Initiate, initiation. And there's so many controls coming in from Wuhan Eastar Pro, right? Yeah. Like they have the ability not only to slow you down, but just to stun you down to the ground. There's not a huge goal differences for this one. Yeah. Whoever can manage to gain more vision will be the winner for this. So? Eastar, even though they're facing those leads in towers, the dragons and common adaptors, but DRGGK still have a lot of like it's even for me. Like yeah. either teams share the same possibility of becoming the winner for this game too. Yeah, exactly. Right now we're already making it to 15 and 30, right? And then we still don't see a huge advantage coming in from any of the two of them. So the teams right now, they know that they just need to push it a little bit more and probably we're going to be seeing the second Tempest Dragon over here mm -hmm. in this game. I'm feeling the same way. Yeah, I'm feeling like that. Yeah, 16 minutes it is with the Dark Overlord. I mean, the Overlord really matters. Those, those Vanguards yes. helped Eastar a lot. Trying and to gain the vision where Guan Yu is because you have to send somebody arranging, clean, weird up. There's, in, for, for the RGGK, like, they do not have the ability to really protect their high ground yep. as easily as for what they have right now for Eastar Pro. It is, just, it is just a little bit harder for them. Look at Agai just waiting in the rear, trying to find an opening. He oh, wants Mulan. that. Monglan is being taken extremely low. He's been launched. Got like for Zero that is going to call and he's going to fall as well. Look at that. Siyang is the one that is going to be targeted out by Baishou. He is right now on the run.
the dragons are already spotting in the mid lane and top lane. I think Baisha can go back safely, but they're facing the fact that three vanguards yes. are rushing to their high ground towers. So the remaining squad have to rush back, trying to protect their own high ground towers. They need to protect those. They cannot fall, and it's going to be a trade because E Star Pro is going to take the bottom lane one. Yeah, two members is not enough since Baisho has just been on spot yet. First ability is trying to steal those HP away, but you can see those items built from E Star. Saka Basko, I'm so sorry to see this pink like shield, which means that the magic damage from like GK will be highly deducted in the future matchups. And that's the problem. Look at that. Like Monlan comes in, he tries in to clean, but it's not enough. Like look at that. Like he's just being targeted by every single person. And the moment that Agai jumps in from the back, there's nothing that he could have done to stop this. Yep. And right now, back to live, E Star, all members surrounding as a team, as a squad, trying to make sure that they gain those dragons. Those common dragons, like common objectives, is yep. one that E Star is always leading. Not to mention number one, number two, both teams. They're the master of the dragons. And look at this, like DRGGK Monglang just with 13,000 gold. But on the other side, e already making closely to the 15,000 mark. Both of them are fully stacked. And the, as you mentioned, like the suck of cloth coming in from Eastar Pro, just like the item that e and the item that Tanran are going to be choosing. It's not like Shenmongxi's damage that fatal, but they have to remain in a healthy state yes. so that the team fights can last longer. And the more time they got, the more spaces and more damage you're going to be contributing to the entire team fight. Agai is oh, being spotted. Tiyan brings him back. He's going to fall. Waha is going to take that kill. The kitty bombs come in. Baishou trying to find the angle. He's going to be slowed down. Tiyan is going to take him one more time. It's going to be one more time. Easter Pro, the ones that they're going to bring in, the super minions. Molan stay alive, trying to clean away for the team. Look at that, Baisho is going to use his body, trying to take on Ito. It's not going to be enough. It's going to be brought in by Tsuyang. It's been taken down. Wow, the RGGK really suffers all of it, even though their enemies are all very low in HP, but they just m cannot find a possible way to deal more damage. The ultimate Whoa. will be avoided by the ultimate from Hua Hai. Nice move, and Sage Sentry is available for now. Resurrection has been triggered, and right now, like, E's are all rushing to the base, trying to get one real kill to their team. A guy is going to join the party right now. He's going to be the last hope that they have, but he's going to be surrounded by three people, Mong Lan comes back with his half of HP. Can he clean this? Super it's soldiers. gonna be one against three. He's oh. trying his best. It's not gonna be enough. Takes two kills, but he's gonna be Easter Pro taking the victory. 2-0, ladies and gentlemen. 2-0, a complete leading in the very first two games till now. Like GK, again. Again, they are facing a lot of stress when it comes to laning, when it comes to invasion, losing the common objectives, but they still manage to keep fighting till the very end. It's a very close one, but I'm so sorry to say this because the time is in the very late spaces so that they have the Sage Sentry available. You can see how prices the pre precise the calculation of the damage of e Star's member. They just know, even though they're so low in the HP, combining together three members, I think they're contributing in like 3,000 HP remaining, but they just manage to keep the team fights goes on and on and on forever, gaining the second winning to their side. BO7, if you're leading with the 2 to 0, you have a lot of rooms for future version of you to make mistakes, to try yeah. something new, and to gain yourself a better mentality. You start seeing right now a little bit of a trend, right? Like we could see in the game one and in game two how e Star Pro gets to the moment of the 15th minute, the 16th minute, and then they just control all of the tyrants. They control all of the overlords. And that is what cements their victory. They do not wait for the minute 20 just to cement that. No, in the main, when you hit the minute 19, there's already no turrets protecting the RGGKs. Uh, I mean, the BP, yeah. I will give the credit to SK myself mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because we are like stunned by the picking and locking in around Prince of Lan Lane, yeah. but we are all expecting what will be the countering strategy, what will be the like answer from E Star, yes. and they finally to pull this off by gaining the vision and mm. making a counter fight against Prince of Lan Lane will be the best solution trying to win during the team fights. No, and at the end of the day, like that's the main idea of why you have coaches, right? Like for them to be able to just play this chess game that you have over there for the BP. This is a best of seven. 
and you need to be able to have just so many different aces under your sleeve in the moment that you need to come up with a new solution, when the moment that you need to come up with, with an answer to the problem, and you look at the coaches just for them to be able to give you answers. And from now on, we have to talk about the result, the consequences of yeah. GK using those Wari compositions, yeah. using Kai and Guan mm -hmm. composition, using Gong Sun Li in the very first round. So which means that the BP will be very, very difficult to, like, it's a challenge for Zhe, yeah. trying to come up with a better idea. Because in the moment that you start use, using those compositions, the solid composition, like you already used this one, it allows you just to a, li a little bit of different options in there. You still have Agudo and and Machao. Yeah. You still have that option available in there. If you get your hands on a Monkian, that you can get a Monkian in there that would allow you to have a winning lane on the top. But besides that, um, I don't see anything else that could give DRGGK a strong advantage against the gigantic Wuhan Easter Pro that we're seeing today. I mean, from now on, what kind of composition will DRGGK be gaining to their side will be fully depending on what kind of composition that SK decided to give it to yes. you by the BP. So, like, we are talking, like, just make a simple calculation there. Counting down those yes. meta heroes, Luban, yeah. Luban parents are like all available for both teams, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And right now, like only uh, Kai and Guan Yu is available for Isai to pick, yeah. and they have those Jin, Lan, Luna, Agudo Oof. available for Oof. entire bank. The remaining heroes, they have a lot of options. It just makes me feel like Wuhan Easter Pro just took two victories, and they did not actually spend on any very, very valuable options of heroes like like they just really got two victories out of just like kind of like put some heroes that they're not T0 probably mm -hmm. T1 T2 yep. heroes mm -hmm. all together and they still be, were able just to take W. And so. not, like not to mention the supports, the available support remaining one, Zhang Fei, Dong Huang Tai are mm -hmm. all available for Ziyang to play. Yeah. And Ziyang, it's so good at a lot of hidden hero pools. And like he have a very deep hero pools. Ziyang was critical for Wuhan Easter Pro to take this victory. I'm totally sure that Ziyang, just in the way that he just played this Kuegutsu, solved the, the challenge yep. of having Agai mm -hmm. playing on Prince of Landling. We thought that that could have been like the little bit of an opening for Forshan DRGGK just to take the victory, but he was wow. unable to. Finally, it's happening. So a lot of fans from East are actually hoping that Ejun's survival, Ejun's contribution to the entire team will be appreciated. Of it is always appreciated. But the problem is that when you're playing in a team where you have five people that they're all carries, oh, it's yeah. difficult just to choose one MVP, right? And for Etron, sadly for him, <laughs> it's not all the time that he's able to just to take this one. You're feeling happy and, the sa and sad at the same time because your True. teammates are the best ones. <laughs> of course, of course, of course, of course. Look at that. Now, this is the one that we did not get to see, right? Because we were on the replay. Yep. Agai comes in with the damage, but then Etron is being able to stumble his way out of that, always being able to survive and dealing the damage. I mean, there's a five, like adding together 10 heroes yep. for this uh, this game, and the two marksmen will be the most difficult to play. You know, yeah. because every single damage, every single ability from your opponents mm -hmm. is aiming directly to you. So you really have to play safe, play nice, given those damage needed for your team, but as well keep yourself safe enough so that you will be not targeted down. I think that. I think that in this in this one match, in this one last one fight that we just saw over there, Agai jumps into the mix a little bit too late. He jumps in right after the moment that Monglan was already taken out of the fight. Yep. If you could have just jumped in a little bit earlier, putting pressure on each one from behind, Monglan could have found a little bit of a better angle probably. Mm -hmm. But since like every single ability and AOE damage just came in directly to you, so will be a very hard task to mm. Monlan trying to stay safe during the team fights. And once that E Star get the idea that they're not directly going for the marksman in their first handed, yep. they're trying to figure out where guy is. Mm. So they are changing during the game. Initially they're trying to pick up those very good ones during the uh, in the jungles yes. where they're using like Ziyang to go initiation trying to like engage and trying to go directly for Monlan. Mm. But it failed for several it didn't times. Work. Yep didn't work, so they change the whole strategy by changing the targets, make it a shift to Guy. 
and that's succeeding. For Foshandi or GGK, they had this advantage that they built in between minute eight to minute 10. Yep. They were just unable just to hold to it for too, too long time. Then after that, like everything just turns up for Eastar Pro in the way that we have seen it happening in this KIC 2022. Like we've seen just Eastar Pro just after you give them a little bit of an advantage, they just don't let it go. Yep. They just hold to it with their lives. And it was difficult for Foshan DRGGK just to try to turn things around at the end. Yeah, it's very difficult for them trying to pull off a great work during the Grand Finals. But like game one, game two, a lot of frustrations are coming out mm. from the results because they could have win. That's the thing that you're lacking from. Just trying to find a better way to make the advantages converting yes. to actually winning. Mm -hmm. That's very important. Try to turn those into victories. You need to stop this Eastar Pro from making it this to 3-0. Right now, we know that the coaches are talking to the players. Let's have a little break, and we'll be back with game three.
Oh. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Ow. Ow. Ow, ow, ow. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. 2-0 right now is for Wuhan Easter Pro. They're taking the advantage after those two very, very solid victories against Poshan DRGGK. DRGGK, like, they've been playing really well. But we've already told you that's not going to cut it. Being good is not enough. You need to be superior. And they need to come up with something in game three or this is going to end up just being a total blast. 3-0. You know the reason that I feel a little bit worried to GK will be the, the sign and you know, the signal. You can see those facial expressions from Mulan. It's not looking good. Yeah. Like he's feeling and they're looking, at least, like looking completely frustrated from no. what's happening just now. I think it's totally understandable because you have of course. the ability and potential to win, but this time and this second is very, very important. You still have a lot of chances to climb it up as long as you take the third one. So we will be divided in uh, of this BL7 into two parts. So the first part will be like three matchups. Normally, with, if we, we are seeing like two to yep. one, it will be easy to chase back. Of course. But if it's a 3-0, I, I think that this this one game is the one that is going to decide how yeah. everything is going to be moving. Yeah. Like if this is, ends up being a 3-0, you and me, we've seen only once a 3-0 turn into a 3-4. Uh -huh. We've seen it only once. And if if it is just so rare, it's for a reason. It's because it's just not something that happens every single day. And in front of this Wuhan Easter Pro, not only they're good, they're just so strong today. Wow. They just have like a great performance today. All right, Foshan DRGGK will not allow that Gunsun Lee, will not allow Shen Mengxi, and they're gonna be taking Lam for themselves. Okay, finally, <laughs> let the battle begin. We are expecting to see this solo yes. battles all over again. Like, we haven't said this, the, the, the story is really touching. That Go ahead. You, like, standing side by side, joining the league three years ago together as the best new players, yes. the new generation, two representatives, one going directly to Fortune DRGTK, the other Hua Hai will be sent into Easter Pro. Mm. And ever since then, they did not make any transfer. They stayed in this club forever loyal. till now. Mm -hmm. Very loyal players. And, oh, what's this? With what? Like, if they, <laughs> if they go for... Pili <laughs> Shou Yue right now. I like that it. One, that one allowed them to have that Pili Shou Yue and the combo. <laughs> but I because like I, it. Oh, of course. <laughs> but do you need to take it out right now? Because that doesn't seem like the best. <gasps> I mean, it's a and certain it a combo. Like, like, you know, what Pili Shou Yue need the most is not the accuracy. Like, the accuracy, mm -hmm. depending on the actual performances of that player, it okay. varies a lot. So what Pili Shou Yue really need is a certain vision. So this will be completely offered by Tyran, yes. the use of the Xia Holden. So this frontliner is very, very important for the entire ESR Pro League. So they mm -hmm. have to make sure that both Lu and Na will be safe enough to do the wave management. And also, like, Bari Shoue will be gaining a clearer version, trying to make yes. accurate snipes. Well, right now, just that Pili Shou Yue, that the third pick is going to be a great challenge for Tuan, how he wants to reply back to that oh. right now in this second round of bans. Not allowing Tran Fei, I don't think that he should allow that Mozi. If Mozi and Pili Shou Yue are going to be available for Wuhan Easter Pro, that the poking damage that can be dealt by those two it's going to be something that is going to put Team Fong in a horrible position. I mean, there's only one player that he managed to keep himself alive mm -hmm. when facing Mozi and Bali Shoyu together. And that player has the name of Ching Rom. You still remember mm -hmm. that Zhou Yu, that exactly. movement, like dodging around. Mm -hmm. uh, even though he's like fully surrounded by the bullets, he managed to keep himself alive. This isn't really mattering. So what will be the remaining choices and for the RGGK? trying to give it to Mulan. I mean, Mulan is really good. The condition, the performances for early on to matchups, it's good. Very professional. Like that Mongya ban just tells you that for Foshan DRGGK, they are not, uh, they're not worried about that. Mm -hmm. But that's going to allow Wuhan Easter Pro to put his, their hands <laughs> onto two marksman composition for this one game. Wow, those bans from Easter, they're just so ready. 
they just know exactly what their composition are most afraid of. Mm -hmm. Like the Sheldon will be keeping Sheldon away, body blocking away yeah, yeah. those bullets. So that's the reason we ban Sheldon. And together they're trying to restrict, give in, like force and DRGK the combo of Liu Bang and Lan together. Trying to make sure the backliners stay safe. Uh, Marco Polo. Marco yeah. Polo. This is the least option And they're they going to take Mozart for themselves. Mm -hmm. Hmm. If they keep Mozart for themselves right now, then that means that, that Tranlian is going to end up just being a support for sure. I thought that actually Tranlian could be used in mid lane yep. and then just have Zhiyan play, playing on Mozart and then they could just still have that composition with that pick in there. It's a winning choices. Mm -hmm. It's a, like a trap over there. So if you think, yeah. It can be changeable, you know. If you think this genre will be going to support, they're probably going to be shifted into the mid laners, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So right now it's going to be found that one last option for Wuhan Easter Pro. Yep. We're going to see what they can do because right now it's going to be a huge challenge for Tien Rong that is going to be playing that Pai Li Shou Pai Shou in the mid lane. We know it's a good option. It allows you to clean wave extremely quickly. It allows you to deal some damage at the same time, but then you start losing a lot of control. Yeah. So the control options that they're going to come in from Wuhan Easter Pro is just whatever that Ziyang and Tanran can do to initiate fights. So like basically, if you are seeing and you are opposing to those Bali Shou Yue com compositions, Mm -hmm. There's two ways, two options for you to figure out. The one way, you're going directly for those very short-handed but yeah. all assassin confrontations. True. So you're looking for those very highly diving in confrontations and team fights. You manage mm -hmm. to win it, you manage to be the winner for this game. But the ra other one will be you make the Pokémon going against the Pokémon. That's the reason why they choose Mods and Marco Polo together at the same time. We're just competing how accurate we finally got It's going to be poke against poke. Poke against poke. It's going to be the battle of who is going to have the healthiest HP bar before engaging the fight. Yeah. So that's the thing. Like They're going to be stalling to start the fight for as long time as they want just to see who is going to chip a little bit more from the HP bar from the other opponents first and who is going to be able to jump in with one lethal punch. I mean, this works the same. That why, why are you doing this by using Bali Shogu? You'll be a fixed target. Yes. So making a very good target for Mods trying, trying to hit. So, yeah, sometimes the bad partner also can be the best opponent <laughs> to your enemy to you use. And this will be the last match in the very first half of the entire Grand Finals. Yeah. If it turned out to be a 1-2, to two, I think we still have a long night around. But if Esar managed to take one more victories, I think Forsha and DRGGK is not looking so good. It's going to be a huge mountain for Forsha and DRGGK just to try to climb up out of that. DRGGK is going to be taking the blue side. Wuhan Easter Pro is going to be taking the red. Let's see what's going to happen, ladies and gentlemen. This is game three of our grand final of the KIC 2022. Bottom lane. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, that was what close. What happened just right there? Like Marco Polo doing the laning, going against a level two Ejen, level two Fawn. Ejen wow. just went back home with 1% of his HP bar. Mm -hmm. You did not expect that from a Marco Polo in this, uh, such an early moment of the game. So Mulan is gaining himself the advantages of the mm -hmm. waves here, but he's cost a, a Purify. That evens up. Oh, I'm, I'm taking <laughs> that one. Oh, I'm taking that one every single time. He still has a little bit more time before Luna is going to try to go back to bottom lane and try um, to put him against the wall. So it stays safe. You're both junglers to get to level, two, uh, level four, gaining the ultimate without their own jungles being invaded. Look at that. Bai Shou is still in there. He knows that Hua Hai is going to come in. He knows somebody there. Like he knows that, and he knows that he just needs to be a little bit more careful. Mm -hmm. Hua Hai just wants to come in and share a little bit of the gold. I mean, being cautious is one true factor to be in the top laners. Yeah. So you gain the information where your opponent's jungler started to do the jungles. So if they are starting to, with the red, he will definitely go up there, yes. gaining the red uh, with the blue. So he will go up there for the red. Look at that rotation right now. It's going to be one more time Hua Hai coming in and sharing more waves in the mid lane. As we can see, the two against two coming that. Wow, he's going to be Ethan coming in with the dash and the second ability, dealing the real damage. Stun down. He's got his fourth. 
and the blades come in to clean that wave. Oh, this is a really aggressive, like one more single auto attack will enable Legion to have gain the skill over to Marco Polo. Since Mona have no Purify, there's no way this Marco Polo can use the Purify, the common skill, trying to avoid those damage. Nope, nothing that he could have done in there. Now look at that. Pompo is being taken extremely low by Tanran, but he's able to protect oh. his... He protect his blue buff. Did you see how the snipe <laughs> was just waiting for him over there? He's aiming to the aid, you yeah, know. Aiming to the healing aid. Oh, look at that, being put in, and now it's going to be caged in. Huahai won't be able to run away. He's hitting the wall. He's being caged in. It's going to be Huahai running away one more time with single digits HP. But unfortunately, like GK, the damage is just not enough. Mm -hmm. And every single member from Isar is trying their best, trying to protect Huahai. Once Luna is down, they're losing a lot of stuff in their jungle. They don't, wa they don't want Luna falling early in the game. Of course. That's going to be... Luna needs to be at the stop during the mid the, the mid game. Mm -hmm. If in mid game you have a Luna that is actually very strong, that gives you such a big advantage. Oh, this is the one we're missing. Oh, like Mulan reached you level two ahead of Ejen, yeah. and that final oh. blow of the first ability, every How? single bullet right on target. I love I love this. The yeah. dash with the second ability mm -hmm. comes in, dealing the real damage, and then Mulan again one more time. Tiny oh. HP bar. Yeah, oh, Zian is showing appearance, but that's not gonna happen. I mean, the, the play is good, mm -hmm. but DRG GK just know they have to find out whether there's some people standing in the bush. Oh, look at that. Now it's gonna be Huahai. He's gonna force by show to Bottom use his old first blood goes to Yi Zheng. And right now it's gonna be Mona, gonna be surrounded by three people. Xin comes into the red buff area just to force him out. And that's going to be a Tyrant that is going to go for Yisar Pro. Yeah, Tyrant just magically appear in the bottom lane. He's the top laner. Who is going to be responsible for the waves? The answer will be Luna. So like the whole confrontation, the whole uh, composition started yeah. to change in for the side of Yisar. Like Luna Huahai will be responsible to the jungle and the wave on the top this at the same time while letting Tyrant go in free, setting this entire vision for the team free. He can go to either the mid, open up the vision for Bali Shoghe, or to the top, bottom to gain the kills, to it participate during the team fights. A lot of different options that they have. Five people rotating from DRGGK over here to mid lane. Now it's going to be Tsuyan. The one's going to have to use his flash oh, to run away. Okay. Heaven's Origin is going to be wide. Tanran wants to reply back. Look at where Etron is. He's waiting in there, keeps his eyes on Monglan. Mm -hmm. It's a fair trade for GK. They use their ultimate trying to force that two available flash. Mm -hmm. Like Qing Rong and Ziyang, those flashes is mained everything. Look at that. Like, Hua Hai does not join in any of these fights yeah. right now. Wow. He knows that his goal right now is just to farm up. He's got two to three minutes more. Mon Lan being taken extremely low. He will be able to survive to that one, but he's been sent back to base. Look at the formation, the standing formation from E Star. The composition is working right now, starting from this point. It's just the poking. Yep. It is the poking that we just talked about. When you do not have half of your HP, you do not want to engage anymore. They send Monglan. They do not even have to kill him. Look at that. It's going to be a 1v1. It's going to be a solo. Zian. Oh, going to jump in. Tanran comes in. It's going to be taken down. Pom Pom paced with his life. It's like, bro, we said, we talk about this as a mm -hmm. solo, but you ask your buddy to come not up cool. front. <laughs> not cool. <laughs> you do not do that kind of stuff. Gentleman's code. You can see how quickly the both yeah. rotations and reinforcement is being made from the side of Easter Pro. All they right. just magically appear in any like <laughs> places in of the course. map. They're going to be there. But I. Look at Pompon, like comes in, and like in this moment he still has his ultimate. Yep. And he just waits uh, for too long time. He thought that he was gonna be a one to one. You can, ne you can, you should always be expecting someone waiting for you in the bush. I think Hua Hai pretty much have covered all the things he has to do in the early and the mid game, which means that he will be fully decked out yep. and have a lot of leading personal gold earned by this Luna. And once the Luna started to participate during the team fights, the damage and those minor controls will yes. be detrimental for DRGGK's backlines. And that's the problem, right? Like Because Luna needs to have that level advantage, needs to have golden item advantage. And right now everything is going very well, like just according to the script. 
Now Tsuyang is going to be taken in. He's going to have to flash away. Comes back and replies back with an ultimate, but he's going to fall one more time. Perfect control coming in from Agai. Papa comes in. Monlan being taken extremely low. They clean the wave, but that mid lane turret is going to fall. Oh, but the waves are quite clean. Chifo oh, will be the next wow. target using the flash to the dodge flash for a little in. bit. Wow, managed to buy himself a lot of times. Managed just to buy himself a little time. It was a good use of the flash, but surrounded by three people, nothing that he could have done. Now, Huahai wants to contest this blue buff. He's been taken extremely low. Bye. It's gonna run away! Magically finds a way out. One more time! Huahai! Born with the destiny inside. It's like it's very impossible to kill this player. Oh, the blade storm comes in. It's going to find a guy. It's going to deal so much damage. Baisho is going to be sent on oh, air. He's going target. to be sent back home while at the same time he's going to fall. I mean, those calculations of the damage is going to be taken and those cooldown waiting for the right ability to be activated again. Like Hua Hai is performing so professionally in this entire, like adding up three matchups in total. The timing, look at that. Pum Pum comes in, he's going to go back home with that extra blue buff. But nothing that right now Fuasan DRDGK can do at this gigantic performance from Hua Hai. There's no other character that we could use to say it's just gigantic. Eight minutes, 48 seconds. And right now, Ishar will still be the one leading the game. Ah, Tifon disappears from the map. Pom Pom's going to come in. He's going to find only Tyran. Tyran has been taken extremely low. And now the Blade Storm is going to push them back. Ethan is going to focus on the turret, on the mid lane one more time. Taking the Pokemon one more time. Wahe comes in. His goal is going to take by show. He sends him back to base. And slowly and slowly, but steadily, Eastar Pro is just one more time making a way to the crystal. We have been talking about this forever. Like, you do not want to give Hua Hai those nope. very important 10 mana to farm up. Mm -hmm. This Luna in the mid game will be a nightmare towards your backline. There's no way you can do. Yep. You, with this kind of composition, there's no possible way for DRGGK finally trying to develop a way to protect the backlines because you're going for this Pokken against Pokken. So there's no frontliner, there's no nope. tank trying to protect Mulan, Marco Polo, and Xingfeng at the same time. There's nothing that they can do, and right now, just e is taking full control and of both the red and the uh -huh. blue buff. And if you are competing, the how fast that these two assassin and jungler are, mm -hmm. are buying those items, like Kwaha is completely winning going yes. against Pompon. Pong. Yeah, sadly wow. for sadly for Pong Pong, like he is not being able to just pair up to the pace that Kwaha is just showing us right now. Difficult, 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 because right now, based on what I've seen, DRGGK is going to have to start using money to spend on Succubus Cloaks instead of trying to deal with, to buy some damage items. You know, sometimes if we are going to see those Pokémon compositions going against each other, yeah. whoever got the longer range yeah. might be having those great advantages during the team fights. So that's what's happening now. Now, and th th even though the items against the siege breakers is not available till this point, but s as the time goes by, like gradually, like Chino is going to get yes. those siege breakers, and the damage will be taken to another completely different level. It is going to be difficult for Poshan DRGGK to do that because right now, at this moment of time, at 11 minutes mark, that Luna is just unstoppable. Nothing that they can do up until the moment that every single player is going to have Succubus Cloak. Without damage, with, without that magical damage, uh, without the magical defense, like it's not gonna be able to take any fights. Look at that! Paisho takes on Etron, tries to bring him back, but now he's going to be the target. Bull's eye, the blade storm comes in. He's going to disappear. Why comes in from behind? Comes in and he's gonna take one more person. Paisho is going to be taken away. That team fight, that kind of coordination from Isa Pro. Like, these five players are unite in the same channel yes. all the time. Every single ability will be followed by the rest of the teams. And right now, they're waiting for the vanguards marching in onto the high ground towers, enabling them to have more advantage when it comes to the waves. Two vanguards going in. The Shadow RGGK. vanguards comes in, and right now, Chiron got full visibility. Let's see how accurate his snipes are going to be. Nothing that Pompon can do now. It's going to be the turret taken to half of its HP, and Easter Pro are right now on the rush back. 
just trying to steal those HP away from Ezar, managed to keep them away from their own territory and high ground towers. But it's, it's just like nothing that can be done right, right now. It's already 4,000 gold advantage. Yeah. You can see already Marco Polo with Sokob's Cloak. Sokob's Cloak for Marco Polo and for Paisho. The only two people that might have an option of fighting back against Wahai. Like hopeless, hopeless. But it's a huge might again. <clears throat> Hua Hai still looking for those engagements. Mm -hmm. If the team fights actually take place in the jungle, I think whoever gets the more gold and higher damage yeah. will be completely taken over. So, GK, what they have to do right now, just avoid, avoid getting in touch with ESARs. Oh, no, no, they do, they, they do not have any chance yeah. right now to win that fight unless that Easter Pro just makes a gigantic mistake. And look at that by show, he's just taking in damage from Eater and he's just being taken. It's such a squeezy kinda kinda Atha right now. He's not a tank right now for anyone. Like a Luna. Oh, they're trying to chase back because they know Pong Pong is on the bottom lane. <laughs> That's the last spot they can ever seen offered by their uh, waves. The boxing in is going to be wide, and right now they're going to reply back. Simple is going to disappear out of this fight. Now it's going to be show the one that's going to be taken on Eater. But it's really is tanky. going to let him down. Pong Pong coming in from the rear. Can he take on something? Dive into the hill. with the second ability. Oh. Goes away. It's going to slam the door on his face. Look Nothing at the backwarders! It won't be AA's favorite A star. I mean, the game point is just one step closer, waiting for the crystal to be defined. The ballista comes in. The people are standing up. 3-0 for Wuhan Easter Pro. One more victory. They've got one hand on the trophy. Can they make it two? They are just one point away from the final glory. Among 38 days of the waiting, of the hard working, of overcoming those challenges, of gaining those very good victorious team fights against a lot of challengers. And right now, E Star is looking so good. Only one more point will be needed for them to become the final world champion. I am so sorry to say this, but I do not see a way for Foshandi RDGK right now just to turn things around. After this performance from Wuhan Easter Pro, like we need, we gotta be realistic. Like this is completely two different levels. We know that Foshandi RDGK, they're strong and that's why they're in the finals. But I'm so sorry. The way the Wuhan Easter Pro is playing right now, it's a B07. There's a lot of heroes that they have been already used and put out there on the table and there's still a lot of options for Wuhan Easter Pro that T0 heroes that they can still use. I mean there's a lot of heroes in this meta of course. and a lot of composition remaining for the two teams mm -hmm. but the most thing that we feel the most worry about is that the mentality is obviously yes. going down from the side of DRGGK. Of course. I mean there's a lot of team fights they actually started but unable to finish mm -hmm. it. So during this kind of very important very key point you do not want to make those mistakes. Any yeah. kind of bad decisioning will be resulting in a way that you're gonna probably gonna be regretting for your entire life. I would love just to be able to go back and just see that last fight one more time. Yep. Because the way that they tried just to take Eitron out of it at the end, like the moment that Pompon comes in, jumps in from the rear, takes on three people. If you would have been able to take the three of them out, yes, like it would have been a good a, a good decision, a good move. But it was just completely, just the door just slammed on his face. Nothing that he could have done in there. I mean, I think like Hua Hai mm -hmm. is literally writing the legend here. Yes. Like this he, is very magical mm -hmm. when you ha have a phrase like, if you give this man 10 minutes, he yeah. will be winning a world to you. And he is actually making this happen. You don't need, you don't want to give those very peaceful farming upstate for Kwan Hai. As long as you can see the gold is getting built up for a little bit, like gradually, step by step, you just know, you just have the idea that Ezra and Kwan Hai is going to do this. They're going to be the winner.
who would you give the MVP on this one? Because I ha I've got my money on Ijeon. <laughs> like Ijeon just was so dominant in the form in the of laning course, stages. Of course. In the laning stages, like Ijeon was completely dominant in there, and then he took control of the whole resources and his performance in that last fight against Pom Pom. Um, I think that the man stood up very, very, very tall. Like huge respect should yeah. be paid for Ijeon, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. because he's. He's suffering a lot on the bottom lane doing the laning, but MVP <laughs> will be awarded to Hua Hai again. One because more time. those farming up, those diving in, those like killings he got. Just his presence oh. in that moment, right? Like in the moment that you are facing an opponent that you know that he's in his top performance, so, like he's in a pristine stage. Like there's nothing that psychologically you can do to try to face him. Four kills, four assists, dies no no times. You know, this is a jungler meta. Yep. So if you are leading your personal goal, you're definitely going to be bringing a lot of advantages to your entire uh -huh. teams, right? Mm -hmm. So as long as the rest of the squad during the laning, they stay safe, 50 to 50. And your jungler will be thriving during the like farming of phases, your team is going to be the winner. It's that easy. Just so like in that. this current meta, we emphasize a lot how important to pick up those very uh, assassin like, yes. for example, Lion Jin. And one thing you're missing here. How how does he run away in that <laughs> I one? I don't know. I'm so sorry. How Magic. How does he run away Magician. on that one? <laughs> it is crazy. Like this one in here. Look at that. Like Team Fong is just being targeted in. Like he disappears. And then everything depends on Pong Pong taking on the fight back. Look at Hua Hai. Launches two people, takes in, comes, takes one, comes in, Aww. takes a second one. That's crazy. That's really crazy. Nothing that could have been done there. Wow, Triple using kill. the waves as a step mm -hmm. to move like one step closer to Marco Polo getting the kills because he didn't have the information that Marco Polo have already used the ultimate as a means to yep. enable him to one more dash to dodge around. So that will be the same time for Hua Hai to dive in getting the kills. Like the complete demonstration of how wealthy you got will bring you a better future, you know? <laughs> You're just gonna do those impossible. Who said, who said that money is not important, right? <laughs> who said that money is not important? I'm so sorry, but this in here, cash is king. Yep. Cash is king and the man just got so much gold, took the advantage, built the items make the good decisions. Yeah, this theory works in MOBA games, I would say this. It puts it 3-0 right now. It puts it a little bit out of the reach from Hoshan DRG GK. And one good thing for the side of GK is that we are going to have in a longer break mm -hmm. after the mm -hmm. previous three matchups. So if you are losing it, please, you have like more time to prepare for this. Like magical incidents happen, miracle happens, TS make it happen. Yeah. If you're three points below your enemies, mm -hmm. you got to have faith that you can do this. I want to sound like optimistic and positive yes. because there is some remaining possibility there. So it will be a good news for them because they still have a lot of time of trying to gain back their normal version of mentality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, they have time. You have talents. You have talent. Like you have everything in there just to make that miracle happen. Yeah. Because let's just emphasize and just underline on that word. It's going to be a miracle what they need to do. Of course. If they want just to take things from that 3-0 all the way to a 3-4, four, force this to a seventh game. Yep. But, you know, that's the charm of esports. Agreed. Sometimes the thing you couldn't have the bravery to mm -hmm. like possibly think of might happen eventually. So let's give the time, very precious time, leaving the room to the players exactly. to make the best of them. And at the same time, we're going to give you guys some time for you to enjoy this halftime show, have a little break, go and get something to snack on, and then we're going to get back after that with game four of this 2022 KIC final.
心跳声何方？飓风刮过无助的脸庞，荒漠中，拼出中。
真的我。七月出发，当我唱起这首歌，感受快乐的真味。想你时候，都灵犀相通。我无论距离多远，过多久，因为爱、啊、学会保留，也因为承诺，放下虚荣，出发。为了你清楚的看到，梦是多么的重要。出真的我，七月出发，当我唱起这首歌，感受快乐都想为你找到出口。飞翔的错路，都因为爱激动，凭着翅膀的挥动。我要你清楚地看到，梦是多么的重要，从未忘记那个最初真的我。
and we are back. That was a really nice halftime show. I, I enjoyed always, it. I, I always enjoy that about yeah. the finals, right? Like mm -hmm. you need to come in and not only about the game, like you need to enjoy the performances from the singers. And Chica Juni, I've been following her since she Nailed came out. Nailed it. I've been following her since she came out. Yeah, of like, course. It's been already years of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hopefully the like, TAM players can enjoy this moment mm. because they are definitely going to feel completely different, like extremely different emotions right now. It is, a, it is a different game when you are in a final, when you're in a stadium. We have 6,000 people right over here on the stadium. Like it is important for players just to be able to, just to take on that stress and try to just kind of like digest it and enjoy it. Enjoy the moment. Like keep up with the motivations. So whoever is going to be the final winning, yes. winning the whole trophy back like 2022 KIC champion, you're going to be rewarded of 3.5 million US dollar awards. That's a big bag. I'm so sorry just to put it out there, but that's a huge bag. 3.5 million US dollars. And for the team that is going to be taking the trophy today, not only the bragging rights that they're going to have as the champions of KIC 2022, right? Of course. But the money that that is going to come in with, that's something that everybody wants. You know, after like casting and watching the previous three matchups, yep. like my only like impression mm -hmm. is that experiences really, True. really matters in the grand finals. True. So like adding up together, like Hua Hai have been participated in, including this one, nine grand finals till now, nine times. How do nine how, times? How, it's like how do you do that? <laughs> I don't know. It's like nine finals for one person. Mm -hmm. Like if you add all of Hoshan DRGGK's people's attendance in finals all together, you don't even make half. Of, of all the finals that Hua Hai has been on on his own. And not to mention that Yi Jin, Qing Ren, Ziyan together, like each player seven times, including this one, this will be the eighth grand mm -hmm. final he went in. Exactly, and I know that the last one is going to be Tan Ran, right? The youngest generation. Of course, Tan Ran, like, sadly for him, only five finals. Oh. But when you put that in perspective, the man has participated in five tournaments <laughs> since he's become a pro every single time that he's participated in either a cup or a league he makes it to the final and he's won four of those and has only run once in second place i mean his least records like the worst performance he had yeah. will be awarded him with a second prize in the grand finals guess what that feels like there's <laughs> people only, like, that they would love mm -hmm. just to be able to make it to one final magical like the mentality from Tyran was mm. born in it you are born with this kind of very but, calm mentality you mm -hmm. cannot just get to this kind of status by like x um a practice or something it's born inside you is it's it his a, dna yeah in he's the got, dna he's got an instant like he is built for this kind of games i'm totally sure that for him like not making it to the final is actually going to be a completely different feeling of course completely different than the, from Porsche and DRGTK, right? Okay, moving into game four, like what do we need to be looking for? What can Porsche and DRGTK just try to do to push a little bit more Eastar Pro into the corner to try to actually be able to take one victory. What I mean, should they do? Like from my own perspective, because it's a, it's going to be the fourth game. Yep. So you are already have been using up a lot of meta heroes, mm -hmm. a lot of very good composition that you find most familiar with. So it will be a better choice for DRGGK to finally move from the blue to yeah. the red. And you can obviously see like they take the initiative by gaining those heroes they really want to pick. But unfortunately, as a result. I think the BP is kind of fighting, but kind of countered by SK strategies. So it will be better if you stay in the red side for a little bit, observe yes. what your enemy is going to mm -hmm. get for their entire composition and, and make that. targets back. Yes, that you're, trying, be you're trying to counter things around. Like, not all the time just being on the blue, it just means that there is something positive. Yep. It just completely depends on your strategy, right? Like, if you are the one that wants to be leading on that first pick, yeah, of course, go for the blue. But sometimes, like, if you're being on the blue three times and it's not working your way, like, maybe you just need to change that. Maybe if they move to the red right now, they're going to be able just to counter something around. I was wondering if we are given the initiative, like, yeah. the first move for the side of Easter Pro, mm -hmm. what, will they, what will be their final pick? Yes. I was, there's a lot of good cards remaining down mm -hmm. there. Like, Mai Shenu has been used, yeah. but they still have Zhou and Chen Mengxi, yes. right? Up under the hands. And not to mention, Tyron, those warriors, like Guan Yu and Ma Chao, 
all available, not to include those marksmen at yep. EJ. Marco Polo constantly has not been used yet. So that's the problem. If they decide to go to the red side, yep. then that's going to allow Wuhan Eastar Pro to take either Shen Mengxi yep. or Meng Tian or Gung Sun Li. And that would even put the option of Da Xiao in there for, for them. Of course, I'm sorry to say this, but you only have two bands yep. available in the first round. So you only got to ban two heroes that you do not want to give it to Wuhan East April in this particular but match. But they don't want to give them anything. That's the thing. There's no way out. There's no way back. You are three points and three minutes. It's a matchup to uh. your opponents. You got nowhere to go. It's do or die. You have to make sure you gain at least one point back or otherwise the whole final we have been expecting for so long will be getting to zero. its end finale it is there's there's it's very very difficult of a course. very difficult position for, of for course Shanti RGG chaos you can see right now already on the screen the heroes that they've already played they've already made so many dif difficult picks right i think that in terms of mid lane that is going to be the weak link for Foshan DRGGK right now. They've already used three very strong uh, meta heroes in mid lane, and I don't know what they could be, what could be their option for this next one. Zhou Yu and Mai Shinanui, they have either of these options because they only use Zhao Jun, Shen Mengxi, and Yi Xin yeah, in yeah. the very previous one. So maybe Mai Shinanui might be the answer. And also they have Lu Bu available for Bai Shou to play. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. if you're adding these two combos up, it look, look nice, right? Yes, of course. So no, no, it, it, There are options in there. But then in the moment that you start Pro just start just taking and countering, mm -hmm. countering those options, They've got, if you have two options up here, I have five options to counter you. And there's no way and no use of banning those junglers. Yeah. There's so many choices. There's so you might as well just ban those targeted places, for example, for example Marksman yeah. or like top laner. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Shen Mengxi and Gung Sun Li, they're not going to be available for Wuhan Star Pro. All right. For so. Sandiar GGK already played both of them. Wow. It is that. Wow. That's that's gonna that's gonna be their option for game four. They're gonna go all in and they're gonna have by show just to take control of this whole thing. I'm it's sorry. gonna be Agutuan Machao. I mean they have a lot of options. They have Zhou Yu, they have Lu Ban available, they have Mai Shilanui, but instead they choose to believe on um, Bai Shou. Swaha man. Wow. They're just going Swaha. That's wow. just going all in. It's gonna be that. Oh. Mike Shiranui, Machao, and Agutuo. That combo in there. It's gonna be amazing Is for Wahai. Is it gonna be a Chang'e? Of course we it's gonna like be a Chang'e. We are like a lot of counters. Oh, okay, okay. Yixing is also available trying mm -hmm. to, you know, be do better things during the team fight, but yeah. Chang'e is also there. Like, <laughs> no, of course. Like, but at the end of the day, like, if you get to just box them in with the Heaven's Origin, regardless of whatever that by show, that that Pong Pong is going to try to do on that Agu Duo. That's just going to leave Hua Hai doors open just to keep just piling up his passive. Of with course. so many different units. A, a little, I'm, a little, I'm a little bit hesitant on on this whole Poshan DRGGK first three picks. You know, there's no like rationality speaking of at this point. Yeah. It's about mutual trust. It's about like team spirit. We can accept the truth that we might be going still to another second round, second place, but we have to make sure every woman of us trusts each other enough so that we are bringing not a very like theoretically the best yes. parts, but it will be the composition that we feel the most confident about. <sighs> it, is, it is tough, man. Like, I really want for Shandir GGK just to be able to take the victory in this one so we can have more games. That's that's my only my only interest today, to be able to see more games. I don't want this night to earn so early with a 4-0. So believe me, I am gonna say it as a professional, I really want us to go more, to go longer. But this composition from Foshan DRGGK, it's putting so much pressure on Pai Shou. Like no pressure. He's, he's gonna have to stand up as the tallest man in this whole stadium remember if they what, want to win this one. Remember what he said during the video? Yeah. Like, I don't feel lesser than any other top laners. Mm -hmm. 
like confidence is what really matters. Like I love the talent composition, like not like you. Of course. Because you can see the like team spirit up there. Okay. We are already facing the fact that we're like zero. And of course. it's already our enemy's gaming point. Mm -hmm. So you might as well just go for it. Like setting free. You do not consider we have like two two more rounds, three more rounds to go no. if they gain a point. So how man. So how man. All in. All in. All just in. Pushing all the chips to the center of the table and saying, is it? It is everything or nothing. For Shandir DGK with that composition, it's just telling us that they're willing to make this their last standing. I mean, being an eSport player, like being a fighter, like a getting defeated is a normal thing. Yeah. No, it happens every single time. So it shows that even though we're going to like stand in side by side facing this, using this very highly risky composition, mm -hmm. but we decided to be standing up front together, accepting this truth together and trying to form up with a composition that we all decided together. Like this will be the team. That's why these five players have been playing in the same team forever. Like we almost thought we reached the kind of sort of limitation for this. Because you have been like working together for yeah. a long time, over three mm -hmm, years, two mm -hmm, years. Mm -hmm. And yet the best score you got will be the second prize. A lot of people are doubting about this. Like whether you have like gone through, there's no break out there. Yes. Like you have already reached your limitations. Right now they are given the answers. Even though they're losing it or otherwise, they're doing it together. Together. One for all. That's it. Everyone is going to be putting their eyeballs towards Foshan DRDGK. They're going to be coming in on the blue side. They're going to try. They're going to try to move into the game five. They need to win this game four. They want their Cinderella story just to keep moving forward. They want the story to keep going. They don't want to close the book of this KIC 2022 with a 4-0 defeat. Let's wait and see what the RGGK can do. And as for ESR, I'm sorry to say this, one more game will enable them to be the final champions. We have been excited to see this result for a long time, and will it be the final one? Oh, look at that. Tyrion taking extremely low. Is oh. he going to be first blood? The flash comes in. He's going to flash away as a reply. And the turret system is going to save him one more time. A bottom lane. Those Zolo fights, those laning are really aggressive as well. Like, ladies have nowhere to fight back going against Zolo, doing the laning with Yi Jin, with Meng Ya. Our guy is extremely deep. He needs to get out of there because Wahai already has a target on his oh. back. He's gonna pay with his life. Just stepping in there too deep, too early. Look at Tyran. Having those target on this blue, waiting for the teammate to arrive at the right moment. And here we go, another blue getting to the side of Eastar 8. Like Wahai is looking oh, for more. Oh, they're going for the kill as well. Papa's been taking the stream below. Wahai's going to take the kill. Now Tsuyang has his second ability available, trying to get them out of that. By Shou coming in, keeps poking, cannot get the kill! With this kind of opening, with this kind of opening, I'm sorry to say this, but the truth lies down there. Like the Easter is one, a huge more step closer to bringing out the final trophy. It's like a wonderful beginning that can you can possibly think of among all the opening possible now, ways. If you saw his back, he'll, Team Phone comes in, but the dash is not going to there, be enough. The flicker there is no flash. The distance is not enough. If something needed to go bad, for DRGGK, it needed to be these first two minutes. I mean, with this kind of composition, if they're losing initially in the very first minute, they're losing the way priority. They're yes. losing the sight. They're losing the frontliners. They're losing every single thing you can possibly think of. Like, Foshan DRGGK. And just imagine, like, Lam going against Agudo, where yeah. every single blue buff and red buff will belong to the side of Lam. Just imagine what kind yeah. of a monster, like, Huaha is evolving towards. 3-0 already for Wuhan Easter Pro. They want to make this a fourth one and send everyone back home early. Look at that. Aga comes in, but it's going to be Etron dealing so much damage. He's got a great angle. And at the same time, he's got Zian's speed boost coming in as well. 
into Get the lane. That. Heaven's Origin is going to lock in oh, three people. Tyrant comes in with the rage slam. By show he's going to run away, but now it's gonna be Tyrant, the one is going to fall. Oh, this Why? one is good. It's going to evaporate at the same time that Aga comes into the rescue. Oh, Chivo basically saving the whole world with the ultimate together with Aga, making it happen, fighting back in their own territory, gaining the two more kills to the side of GRGGK. That oh. was the one thing that they needed. They needed to turn things around quickly. And now Mongland wants to come in, puts a bomb, takes a target. And now Team Fong still comes in. Does he have a flash available? Yes, he does. But Etron just spotted him out as he was on his way. And since the Purify is available, there's no way that this kill is going to be happening. Mm. All right, see the replay. How the DRGG can beautifully fight back within this one single team fight. The ultimate from Ejin is really, really good. Yes, Surrounding exactly. like three members together. But the diving from Maisha Nui just keeps those enemies away. Yes, exactly. Like I do, I do believe like in the moment that Tsuno was able to box in three people, I thought that it was just going to be more kills for Huahai. How did everyone just got out of that without even getting one kill? I mean, I, it's still early I can, game. I, I cannot, I cannot <laughs> explain. I mean, three minutes is way too early for Huahai. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, the, the time is really limited. And not to mention that if you like standing inside of the ability from Agudo, you will be getting those HP restoring yeah. all over again. One way oh, to make sure. Huahai comes in for Pai Show, and then the dragon's already taking, putting some oh, damage. Chinkle again. He's gonna be put Knock on back. air. The Armageddon's going to be wide. is going to fall. Tyrant is still alive. He's boxing in Pai Show. Pai Show wants to reply back. Ethan turns around, and he's now putting the target on Agai. Yixing is trying to slow down Agai. Agai is trying his best to save Pai Show because Pai yeah. Show is taking the tower damage, right? Of course. Too much of the tower damage. They're getting too overly excited because they have gaining the kill over Huahai. They yep. want to make more things yep. happen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You get the kill over there on Huahai, you get the kill on the jungler, and then <laughs> for sure everyone of is course, just like thinking, like, <laughs> this is the one. Now, it's a sad news that GRGGK is letting um, Baisho take in too yes. much of the tower da uh, damage. Yep, they need to, they need Baisho to yep. have gold. They need Baisho to have damage because he's going to be on the spotlight the whole game. Mm, Mulan, 3.4. While like Ejen, 3.7. Hundreds differences of personal gold. All right, our guy already standing over there on the blue buff area. He's oh. got Vision of Huahai, who's already level 9. The arm again is going to launch him on air. Huahai is going to reply back to that Mongla and Pompon bon come in. And they have their eyes on that blue buff. Ting Fong is being stopped here. Oh, he just comes in with his ult. He's got a great angle. Pump is being put on air. Launched up. Still down. Sent back home. One more kill for Eastar Pro. I mean, I think initially, I think this team fights favored like GK more because they brought like Huahai really low. Uh huh. But unfortunately, like Maishinu is kind of stopped, and right now they're looking for more diving into and taking the red to their side. Maishinu is standing by the side, but there's no way he can possibly find a way to break in through. Nothing Ooh. that they could have done in there. Pom Pom, sadly for him, right now, he's just being taken down so easily. Nothing that the jungler from DRGGK is being able to do to help his team in this whole situation. You know, this just displays how like powerful like ESR as a team is. They do not have only one core. Nope. If you target all of the talents, all of the abilities to one single person, the rest of the squad will mm -hmm. stand up. That's the same situation happened to a lot of teams. They're trying to figure out who will be the main core for ESR, and we still have not had the full idea of who's going to be the true core because every single player can be the core according to what kind, of, yeah, what kind of heroes they're going to be pairing themselves with. All right, that now the target is going to be that mid lane turret. Immobilized, Tanran is being taken so much damage from everywhere. Team Fong is going to join the fight. They come in, Tanran is the only thing that they're going to be able to find. But GK, I think this mentality is good, even though they're like losing in a personal yep. goal or something like that. But being able, being positive to go to challenge, yeah, ask yeah. For, for more, like engaging all the time is looking good. They need to get rid of e of course. early. It's just like the position that e is just finding right now, just the angle that he's using right now, it just allows him just to keep dealing so much damage. But like, e is surprisingly rich. Yeah, of course. 
Nothing they have been able to do. The Heaven's Origin is going to come in one more time. The Rage is Slam. Huahai finds the angle. He gets on the red first. He's now trying to find on the backliners. He cannot get on anything. Oh, but Bajau Bajau is the one that comes in from behind. It's not lethal. He's damaged. Huahai is taking oh, a semi low. He's going to be popped on one more time. He wow. comes out of that with single digits HP. Like Huahai have been dodging, avoiding thousands, hundreds of damage. Those fans from Qingbong, those swords from Baishou. A lot of damage are being avoided simply by making those very smooth motivations. Let's see, let's see. Again, just watch where Hua Hai is initially finding a perfect place where yes. every single one is being knocked down on air. It's not looking that good. And then he just takes the fight over there against Baishou, right? And then Baishou uses his spear trying to get on the man. But nothing, it's lethal. Nothing can just kill Hua Hai tonight. Well, this man is on fire. He is on fire. Dominating the entire game. This is team leader. That's... Wow. We, we said that he's the only one who knows what it is to uh -huh. win KIC, right? Uh -huh. And right now he's just showing that he, he's up for the task. Right now they have eyes on the red buff. Tan Ran comes in, the rotation to mid lane. The Dragons are going to put pressure on that mid lane turret. Vanguards again. I, I think every single time. Vanguards in Overlord went to the side of ESR. Yep, I have not seen... Well, no, I saw I saw one or two mm -hmm. going for DRGGK, but nothing that is going to be critical, yep. you know? Yep. Like nothing that it could be like, okay, yes, this is a moment for them to push. Just answer back after, after fights only. E-Star is gradually, like peacefully building up those gold leads against your enemies. And right now gaining the common objectives, fighting for those dragons will be their next step. Trying to gain more stuff to their side. 10 minutes is cannon attack. And those dragons just went to the dark version, becoming more important and more powerful. Shadow Overlord and Shadow Tyrant are oh, available right now. They could be point. the last ones that we see in this KIC 2022 if Eastar Pro are able to take the victory. Like my Shlenui, good moves. But the RGGK does not have enough time to try to rush for this Overlord, so they ma they have to make retreat back. They must retreat right now. It comes in, the Ratchet Slap following it by the Flash. Everyone is on air. Look at Wahai trying to find the angle coming from the rear. Baishou keeps an eye on him. Yep. No one can get to Eaton one more time. And the turret in mid lane is going to fall. Like two flashes is being used trying to force up one from Molan. So Tyran and Tyran together use a flash trying yep. to force into some sort of team fight. But Molan magically finds a safer spot for him to keep himself alive. But you have to lose something in turn, right? Yes. You're losing this vision in the river so that E-Star is taking full control of the Look Overlord. The HP remains down. Oh, Lady it's going Sun. to be for Mong Lan. Mong Lan is going to take on that now. But Baishou comes in from behind. It's going to be targeted by Kwa Hai. The Heaven's Origin is going to box him he in. He survived. It's going to be Popo come in trying to My save Shinanui. his teammate. My Shinanui is not going to be able to run. They're Look at winning. That. They're winning. Bosch and the RGGK. With only one man down, but magically fights back with the steal of the dragon with the Overlord. Ladies win one simple out of attack. Why I just find the man in the bush? Oh God! This boy can see everything in the map <laughs> right now. He smells blood like a tiger, like a like shark. The his. Wow. After this, this night is gonna be more amazing and impressive than we anticipated before. It still holds a lot of possibility for Fush and DRGGK to turn the side around. Look at the remaining HP of the Overlord. Yep. 853 or something like that. HP remaining by only one more single attack from Lady Swim. Managed to safely, magically bring this entire game to a complete different ending, maybe. Wow! Like, did you see how Team Fong, he had only one target? I saw everything. I saw everything. <laughs> <laughs> he had only one target, and his target was e -tron. We said that e -tron needed to be out of the formula, and that's exactly what Team Fong went to do. Oh, oh one oh. more time. Look at that. Silence down. By Shou cannot find the angle. Pompo is just taking damage from the turret. They have to push back. They want to pull in, but they do not have the surprise no more. You know, it's almost like 
it's an ultimate battle, you know. You're setting free. You're not worried about yeah. wave. You're not worried about and uh, towers. You just want to make sure you wall the one winning all the team fights. Oh. So excited. Super exciting action we have right now. Look uh -huh. at Huahai's position right now. He's going to be spotted by Baisho. Uh -huh. It's going to be a one to one in there. Look at that. Baisho is forcing Huahai just to ult his way. Oh, the damage is enough. That. Jumps in, but it's going to be Sun being the one that with his second ability gets him out of the river. But Baisho like, is literally saving the world. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like those solo fights he picked up. Trying, trying to steal those HP away from Hua Hai, making sure to for the entire team that this jungler will not be healthy enough so that our backliner can step like closely to their sides a little bit. Look at wow. that, Fosh and the RDGK does not want to go of course. quietly. They want to fight up until the last minute of this game four. Well, this is the energy of the faith. You know, having the face of believing each other, like mutual understanding and trust is lying down below. Heavily. Right. Shadow Tyrant's going to be online one more time. Hua is being spotted by Baisho once again. Baisho, he goes in from the rear, forcing Eastar Pro to leave this Dragon for a reset. Moving in in the middle. Rotation by Baisho over there on bottom lane. Um, Baisho needs to be played extra ca cautiously like, yes. from this point on. Like he cannot just be caught in his rotation. And with the help of Sun Bing, like E-Star members can be everywhere. Yes. Like within a short amount of time. Okay, like Hua Hai again diving deeply into the back line. But and he's going to be spotted by Baisho uh -huh, one again. more time. Look at that, he takes oh, it on one-on-one. He's going to have to ult his way out of this. Now the Armageddon oh. is going to find three people on air. This is going to be second ability by Sun Bing, the one that there's going to put them out. Siphon taking extremely low by the turret damage. They are going to get on the turret, but they are not being able to find the kills yet. It's like a deja vu, like the same thing happened again with like Baisho being the bodyguard to uh -huh. the entire team and protecting the backline, making sure that Mulan stay alive by staying those HP away from Hua Hai. Look, SK is completely like stunned by, by what's happening just now. Now we said that Hua Hai was just acting like a shark in the water. He could smell blood everywhere and Baisho knows that he needs to stop that man. Oh, those damage from like Ma Chao is really, really hot. Wow, look at how many people on oh, air four. launch four on air in there. God. If it would have been for Sun Bin's second ability, that could have been a full Ooh, on yeah. ace. Like the result is going to be looking ugly for the side of E-Star. But right now, they're still a little bit leading in their personal gold and th the whole entire team. And since we all know the fact that Sun Bing is going to be like getting stronger yes. to the late game, so ESR, they still have a lot of opportunities. But one thing they have to make sure is gaining the river vision. It is since both dragons is about to be spawned and the Overlord is standing up right there waiting for whoever got to win after the team fights and become the master of the dragon. All right, Tanner, and soaking in all the damage he needs. Let's wait and see on that. Baisho is going to clean the wave in mid, and Hua Hai is making his rotation to bottom lane. His target is going to be the bottom lane Blue tier team. 2 turret Destroy as the RDGK takes on a little bit more vision on top. Overlord. Wow, the RGGK. Like a thriving Garat's the last chance of the hope to survive. Look, and they do not have even gold advantage. Look at that, Baisho is going no team falling. The one that's going to spot Hua Hai this time. Aga is being put on air. The Armageddon comes in here and is taking extremely low. They cannot find the angle. Team Fong and Baisho are coming in from behind. Those and lines. they've got green light to come in and deal damage. Yitrang is the next target. Baisho takes him in. Team Get Fong comes one in. Get one more kill. Resurrection. Stand up. Sit down. Takes one. Takes two. That's go gonna the be the end! That's gonna be the end for this match! Zhiyang will be the only person alive right now. Let's see whether they have enough wave on either lanes. But I'm sorry to say this because, like, E-Star have taken all up, managed the wave, while Baisho together with Pumpum make it happen. The waves are rushing in, they're waiting for the wave to march on the high ground towers. Seven seconds the time of revival time, well, this not be enough. It's not no, going to be enough. No, no, it's not going to happen. Take the turret and then it's they not need to happen. rotate for the dragon. Wow. They need to go right now for that overlord. That needs to be the next target. 
the RDGK right now, they're trying their very best just to hold to that cliff. They that, do not want to fall. This is really great. Let's see. Like, our guy will be the first target, but unfortunately, mm -hmm. he remains himself alive and used ultimate with a flicker trying to initiate and followed immediately up by Pom Pom's ultimate. Yes. And look at those, like, assassin machinery together with Bioshock just diving directly into the backline and melt everything up. Oh, I just love that. Look at that. And Quahai stands up and he's not going to fall quietly. He's going to take at least one more person with him. Yep. And one more thing, you can see like how rational like E Star is. Once they have the idea we're we're not going good yep. during this team fight, they send somebody back. Yes. Even though it's a Ziyang. If Ziyang died, I that's think it. Yeah, that's it's it. Done. Like game five. Let's move on, right? Like so they need to understand that you cannot win every single fight. And whenever that you see that you're not winning that one, then it's time for plan B. Overlord. All okay, right. this All right. Overlord is going to go for DRGGK. Well, this is the very first time that like, DRGGK is minutes. leading the mm -hmm. game. Mm -hmm. Even though it's your, their enemy's gaming point, match point, but they performed the best throughout the entire night. Do they want to challenge this one? Team Fun finds an angle. The trying dragon! To come in. A guy comes in, but it's going to be Quahai, the one that is going to reply back. Mola. Look at that! He gets on the back laner, but show has eyes on him. He is the target right now. Tyran is going to be the one that is going to fall in. I got kicked on. Does not follow in. Wow. Like, make the good. The bad use of Sunbin's second ability enables Easter to be the final one standing in front of the Tempest Dragon, waiting for the Wood Dragon to be spawned because they have one more member than DRGGK. 15 seconds for that Tempest yep. Dragon. Yep. That's going to give Easter Pro a little window that they're going to have. That power play. That smite from Ziyang just <sighs> secured down this dragon. And this buffs offered by this dragon they will exactly. be extremely helpful for Ezar trying to have more damages when it comes to the team fights. That is the reason why, right? Uh -huh. That is the reason why they are able just to take on this fight. DRGGK had better angles for that fighting. Like they've got green light onto E Drunk. But the problem is that with the Flux Capacitor coming in for Sunbin, it's already 20 minutes. The cooldown for that makes it almost inexistent. I mean, it's a very obvious weakness from having the Agudo in your whole composition. Yep. The, the smite works differently than the normal one. Mm -hmm, and not mm -hmm. to mention the fact that e have two smites available. Yes. So if, when it comes to fighting for the dragons, the possibility of GRGGK getting the dragon will be lower, way much lower than e -Star's. So a is definitely going to be having those confidence wow, when it comes to look Dragon. At that. Immune, the Armageddon comes in, but it's going to be wide right now. Everyone is taking damage. Simfon trying to find the angle. The Flux Capacitor moves. Eastar Pro back by show is not to be seen around this fight as he was cleaning the wave down in bottom lane. But I love it. I love the whole the vibe is going on and love the fact that this game lasts longer than 20 minutes. Yep. And this will be... The second Tempest Dragon we saw today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is the second one. You're totally right on that. And look at that. They're oh. forcing Quahai to get back out of there. Well, wow, these two bodies taken together, they're the nightmare of the Ysard backliners. They once do not you, want that. <laughs> once you saw like these two characters taken there side by side, it's very hard to get away. Okay, let's see what's going to happen right now. The Tempest Dragon is being taken to 50% of its HP. They are HP. forcing somebody. Armageddon comes in, takes two people on air. Aga is going to disappear out they of the fight. Dragon, the Dragon is going for Pong Pong. But Shaw has been taken extremely low. He's going to resurrect. Can he get out of that one? No! It is going to survive, but it's going to explode by the first ability from Sunbin. They took the Tempest Dragon, but they lost two people in that fight. But look at the waves on the top lane. The Eastern members have to rush back because of the crystal, because the wave is getting themselves a lot of pressure. That's the one true advantage for e uh, the, the RGGK because they have already gained yep. the high ground towers. So their waves is going to be stronger comparing for the Eastern ones. And let's see. That's the problem One in there, look at that. Miners might enable Pom Pom to secure down the Tempest Dragon, and the rest of the squad, they're trying everything they got to just escape away. Look at that, right now it's gonna be Star Pro, the one that they're gonna come in for the turret. It's gonna be 35 more seconds that they're going to have that Tempest Dragon effect that is going to be dealing the lightning coming from the skies. 
like double defensive item for Ejen. This Mengyang, yeah, this marksman will be extremely tanky to tackle yeah. down. And just put that on top of the second ability from Sun Bin. Of course. It's gonna be so hard. Like the only way that Ejen is going to disappear is by burst damage coming in from Xin Feng. Of course, like look at that. He's being targeted, tower. but he does not fall. Mm. Takes in so much damage. There's going to be the turret on the bottom lane, the one that's gonna fall. And Three that's gonna be the tower. first time that we're gonna see only the crystal for Easter Pro standing in there. No more turrets to protect nothing. It's gonna be 360 degree super minions coming in. Three high ground tower taken to their pocket. Like DRGGK is doing whatever they can do, trying to extend their advantages comparing to their opponent. And right now, vanguards are rushing in. DRGGK team will have the splendor available. Oh, look at the Agai comes in with double knock up. He's going to resurrect. Ethan is going to disappear. Can someone finish the man a second time? It is going to be Team Fun, the one that is going to take that kill. One more time, the dragons are coming in. Team Fun's going to fall. Tyran is being pushed back. Monglan is still alive. He's dealing damage, clean it up, but Huahai comes in, Sage's the Resurrection entry. comes in one more Destiny, time. Destiny, one more comes kill! In, gets the kill, gets the second one, Pumper. and Pumper running away for his life! He's going oh to resurrect! Oh my god, 3 Agai. 1! Comes in, the Armageddon, Pumper needs to get out of there, the Super but Minions are super already soldier, in the crystal! Super Minion are rushing oh. in the air, is trying their best to defend oh. their face! The RGGK take the victory, ladies and gentlemen! The Super Minions wear the cape, and they are the heroes that are going to force this to a game five. This is the energy that we have been talking about. There's <laughs> no limitations upon those Woo! five buddies standing side by side. They are making a lot of improvement, a lot of them one step <laughs> further to their dreams. I mean, huge stress. Oh, like they have zero on their like scoreboard. And their enemy East are pro, one of the best thing from KPI have three. And they're willing to take the fights, they're willing to take the risks by gaining those kind of composition, <laughs> by giving by show the Ma Chao. I was wondering who will be awarded with the MVP, but I think every single member performed the best. It's so good. Thank you for all the players because you are making this night the most memorable night ever. The best day in 2022. Oh, you gotta love this whole thing. You gotta <laughs> love this whole thing. In the moment that you do not know what composition just to take out, you just need to find the one person that wants to become a hero. Did you still remember? You're the one who's doubting this decision. I was no, no, no. <laughs> Let's be realistic. Let's be realistic. I did not see this happening. This composition is what just made for Huahai to have so many different units around. And we made it all the way after 20 minutes, where Sunbin already has his flux capacitor almost in unexistent cooldown all the time, again and again and again. The fact that Yi Zhang is the one falling in there in that last fight, there was no way that Eastar Pro could have just handled back the fight. You know, from this time on, I'm gonna bring those very interesting statistics to share with you guys. Oh, go ahead. So, in their like historical like battles, mm -hmm. in count in total, there will be six times of the BO7. Yes. And the winner will always be Eastar. Like Eastar have a lot of experiences when it comes to how to win mm -hmm, against mm -hmm, GK. Mm -hmm. And finally you're seeing one step closer, but GK just managed to put a stop sign there. Yes. Buddy, it's not gonna be the ending of the story, you know? It's not a grand finale. No, no, we no, no. We still no. have our matches going on. And from this on, just to imagine the mentality right there from GK. GK right now, they are in the top of their oh, wow. confidence and mm -hmm. self-esteem because they just saw it that it can be possible. It can be done. They just saw the light at the end of the tunnel and they are not willing just to sit down and they just let that light just completely vanish. Of course. They need to keep one step at a time, one foot, the other foot moving forward towards that light, that little hope that they have to try to take that trophy, make it from a 3-0 to a 3-4, it could be done. I mean, everyone loves the Cinderella story. Yes, yes, like yes. the person that we're seeing from the camera right now, like by show, mm. he used to be a kid who will be crying like heavily after he got defeated in the semifinals or the quarterfinals. Yes. But he was that vulnerable and that's just take one more look at him. Like smiling <laughs> so confidently, but remaining in a very rel relatively calm status. He's not excited, overly excited or of something. Course. It's like, 
my personal like it's a normal my normal condition <laughs> to win over E Star. Like Bai Shou definitely match all one of his best moves. And that's and that is the thing. Like I am super happy that Bai Shou came in and they just took his feature hero, like his most featured hero, and then just like came in and just gave us a show of how it's supposed to be done. Now, after we've been going through the hype of seeing Foshan DRGJK just staking things around. <clears throat> what do you think Eastar Pro is going to do? They do not want that little oh. light at the end of the tunnel just to become I mean, a huge beam. And they're still leading hugely, no, like yeah. significantly in the series. They ha do not need to like have a special preparation or something. Okay. They just do according to their plans. Mm -hmm. And I mean, if you can have a deeper look at the notebook that Ask is actually holding, All right, right. there's a lot of remaining composition for them to choose. Mm. I don't want to really calculate like, the warrior system, the Thatcha, or um, Thatcha might be not available, and Luban as well. Yes. You know, they can have a lot of choices. They don't really need to count how many remaining heroes there for GK. Mm. They just have to make sure that they did their best. They're still like leading hugely in the entire series. Mm -hmm. All right. So Easter Pro, you believe that they do not need to be worried about like anything that Foshan DR GGK they need to be they could bring up right now. Like the only thing that they have to be worried about mm -hmm. is trying to make sure your players yes. are in the right mood. Agree. Yeah. Agree. You need to be able to see this as what it please, is. Please, please, say the man's name, please. <laughs> okay, let's go with that. DRGGK by show is gonna take the MVP as you can see it on your screen, ladies and gentlemen. Superstar. It's gonna be that man. Like the superstar. one that the Kenyon was just talking about. <laughs> You're always going to remember who saved you from the darkness. Yes. And that smut, like little slide of the light, will be like by show, shining, breaking through out of darkness, bringing one more slight chance of survival for DRGGK. Woo! Woo! Now, let's see exactly how did that happen. This Mongland just steal that dragon over there. Oh yeah, this that is really critical. something. Yeah, that's really critical. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Allows Pai Shou just to come in from the side. Comes in, takes Sun Bin out, then no flux capacitor in there. And then Team Fong with one target in mind, comes in with the flash. It's wide, but takes the man at the end. The kill goes in for him. This one in here. This was bad news. Bad, 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 bad news. A guy puts three people on air, and look at my show and Team Fong. Yeah, the, those positioning, right? They're just, they're just telling everyone, just stall, man. Just stall. Take a couple more hits. Just <laughs> take a couple more hits, and then we'll come in and save you. Project melting down all the back lines. Yes. <laughs> Mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. And you mentioned that how they just sent Zuyang just to leave the fight, right? Like yep. I, be, I do believe that Zuyang could have stayed and used his flux capacitor just trying to allow at least one more person to get out of there. Of but course. it would have been a gamble. Oh, like they're enjoying their game. I don't <laughs> worry about their mentalities, right? Like after getting defeated, after the Crystal getting like, completely blocked away by yep. the super soldiers like Hua Hai. Oh, I always like this kind of scene, you know, where they're shouting together. Let's Go! I love that. Look at them wow. reacting as what it is. This is just a very important victory. Whenever you're in a BO7, the most important victory is always going to be the first one. Yep. Because that first victory is the one that gives you the confidence just to move forward. Just to tell you like, you know, it can be done. Before getting that first W, it's really hard just to imagine that you can actually take the victory. I mean, the records are lying down there waiting waiting to be renewed or something. Yes. Like DRGGK, the last time they went on the stage, like mm -hmm. 2021 Grand Finals, they're like the opponent will be Chongqing Wolves. And the score is ending up to be a two against four. Two to four, yeah. And now they're facing the fact that one against three. I don't know what's going to be the final ending for this one, but I just hope that they can evolve. They're going to be showing us different types of like gaming plays of the mentality and different changes about having one whole year of a personal growth. DRDGK never had a gold advantage in that whole game. Yep. The whole gold advantage was always for E-Star Pro. 
and that's something that you need to give them a, like a tap on the back, man. Like they just came in, they never had gold advantage, they never had level advantage or item advantage, but at the end of the day, the fights are what counts, and they were able just to take that victory. I mean, from now on, like GK members, don't worry, take a short break, yes. because you're getting too excited for this. <laughs> and just to make sure you have prepared enough, like psychologically and physically, mm -hmm. for the future matchup. And because you magically bring another like slide of survival for yourselves. Well, let's wait and see what the RGGK is going to show us, because we're moving into game five. Game five, we're going to see a lot of heroes that they have been banned. It could be the moment for a Tatshaw to be out there. It would be a moment for a Tung Juan Tai to get out there. Mung Kien is another option that we might be able to see in this one. But all of that is going to happen in game five. And all of that is going to come in right after we have a short break for everyone just to go and get a sip of water and come back online.
We did not know that we were going to make it all the way to Game 5. It looked like it was going to finish in Game 4. But for Sandy RGGK, they do not want to let this whole final finish. Mm -hmm. They want every single spectator that is here in this stadium to have their worth, their money worth in this whole activity. Just by the second, when you started to question why is Fortune and DRGGK yeah. becoming the best two, they gave you the answer. Uh -huh. That's why. Mm -hmm. That's the reason and how they got themselves into the Grand Finals. But the BP are still quite favoring the side of Eta Pro, because not to mention they're leading in the scoreboard. I mean, the remaining heroes for DRGGK, they only have one way to go. They still have to ban those goals on the edge and together. Yep. There's no way out. And for Eastar, this the remaining hero pulls like Zhou Yu will be one true thing to fight for because they have already both used Zhao Jin and Yi Jing at the same time. While mm -hmm. GK has used one more Shimoshi, since Shimoshi will be banned away, so Zhou Yu will be the remaining the best solution. Or otherwise, you're going for Jungle or Switch to completely different, like surprising Just pick. Ana just analyzing a little bit about their performance <coughs> yep. today, right? Like you can still you can still see that. In terms of Oshan DR DGK, Pong Pong has not have been having like the greatest of his performance. So it's been really difficult for him just to take the spotlight and to actually be like the main core yep. in the whole team. And this last game, like as we were just discussing, Oshan DR DGK has a completely different performance because by show is the one standing up in there. Now, bringing that up, are we gonna just move all resources one more time to buy show? But it's gonna happen. Is it? it well, it. Well, they find the ultimate like weapon. It's no because they have already used Guan Yu and Macha at the same time. Yes. Since Montan won't be kept on the fan places from E Star, so the only like soldier you got, Mulan or Charlotte, not Oof. a very good picks. You know, so nope. they're switching to this duo. I've been mentioning this forever, like Luban, pair, like Luban and Luban number seven. Yeah, exactly. Like Luban and Luban number seven might be the answer over wow, here. Wow. But then that just puts the spotlight one more time on Monlan. <clears throat> and Monlan had the spotlight on game one and he was not able just to take things around. Do you remember like the solution for Isar trying to counter this Luban number seven and Luban master will be Prince of Lanley. Yeah, Prince of Lanley. It's still available. Dong Huang Tai is still available. A lot of very aggressive supports is up in the hero pools to choose. So Tzu Yang is going to be the one that's <laughs> going to have to stand up. Yeah. Like imagine the man, is, the man is a support and then everyone is like, yeah, it's all right. Tzu Yang is going to stand <laughs> up. Tzu Yang is going to carry. It's going to be fine. <laughs> Why not? A support carry. Wow, I was really wondering what will be the final choice for E Star. Those mid laners, those yeah. mages for Chingyuan to play. Like, since Joey is out there, taken already yeah. by Chingfeng. So, right now that Joey is not an option in there, mm -hmm. I start seeing a lot more possible the option of Chang'e or the option of Si Shi just being an. Uh, being being picked oh, over there in Oh, Shang Wan, good ones. I was mm. just going to be mentioned this. Like, since assassins? all the assassins, right, are off, my Shinui has been used. The Zhao Jin, Shou Yue for the third <laughs> round, and Yi Jing as well. So the remaining hero polls, like, Zhou Yue is not available right now for in the future. No. Mm -hmm. And if they are looking yep. for those very typical ones. Look at that, Prince of Landing. Yeah. It's, gonna be the, it's gonna be the fourth and last ban mm -hmm. from the side of Foshan DR. You gotta be cautious. You yeah. gotta be cautious. And the, since Kui Guzi has already been used by Ziyang, they do not need to worry about those like one versus two heroes in the, yep. in the, the bottom lane. All right, what's going to be the option for Wuhan Easter Pro? Oh, yeah, we're leaving now this one. Like, Ganja and Moi is still, thin, still there, clean a wave, and also can be a huge nightmare for Luba number seven. So, for Shandi RGK, Pong Pong is going to have to be on Jing. Wow, they, and they, they always. They need Jing. They also have Dong Huang Tai in this. Like, if you can ah. come. Yeah, you can give yourself a Dong Huang Tai paired up with Ganja and Moi. Of that's course. perfect. That would be amazing uh -huh. for Wuhan Eastar Pro, right? Like, just let's go. It's set. 
Dong Quan Tai, it's gonna be the option in there, and then Xiang Yu is gonna be the option on top lane for Pai Shou. Mm -hmm. Like the pick in, the locking in for Xiang Yu is basically just a lure trying to trick, trying to make Ziyang have the ultimate wasted yes. on Xiang Yu so that the other member can manage to survive. Who's gonna be soaking in all the damage, the burst damage coming out from Ganyang's ultimate? Like Xiang Yu won't be the only one who can possibly handle this kind of type, this type of burst damage. So Xiang Yu is there. Like standing up front, trying, trying to attract Ziyang's attention, trying to make like Ziyang having the ultimate unleashed on Bai Shou. The problem is that I, I can see Ziyang every single time that he's gonna be broken oh, yeah. his Forsaken contract. Yeah. Just to have full <laughs> HP or extremely healthy position just to try to find whoever that he's gonna be the that is gonna be the target. You do not have that high of a poke threat coming in from Poshan DRGGK in terms of trying to slow down Ziyang I mean, more than just throw you fire. Like Ziyang is really clever. I never use this word to describe player. Okay. But, like smart. He's so smart on mm. the like comprehension of certain heroes. Like Dong Wang Tai can be played passively, can be played protectively, can be played aggressively and just, he just know when to play different type of the game styles, right? Wow. He just know exactly what is needed the most during the game. This player like is the main brain behind all this. Ziyan just needs four or five thousand gold. That's all Ziyan needs. He just needs four or five thousand gold for him to be able to have boots, for him to be able to have the howling emblem, and for him to be able to just have at least one small item for for defense. Wow. And that's all he needs. He just needs four to five thousand and then he's gonna be on. And we have been talking about Ziyan for a while. Let's see, like Tyrant has Guan Yu. Wow. Backline nightmare. This joys every single backline. Well, like Fosh and DRGK form a safe enough, like safe enough compositions for mm -hmm. Luban number seven to stay alive all the time, do the damage. That will be a question. That's going to be the interrogative that we're going to jump in this whole game with. Is this going to be the last one? Or are we going to keep moving forward? Let's wait and see what's going to happen. Already two against two oh. rotation here in mid lane. Look at where Pompon Pong is, trying to steal this blow away, doing this sneakily. Sneaky mm -hmm. move with a smite. Sneaky, sneaky, and he comes in and he's going to find only Ziyan, the one target in between him and going back to his breath. Oh, this is really good. They sent two members, Molan, together with Pong Pong, trying to have in the maximum amount of damage, trying to clean the blue as soon as possible, and they did it. Yes, and they were going to be able to protect their own blue. Of course. Right now, Pong Pong is going to have a very big advantage compared to Hua Hai. Like three buff with one buff. Mm -hmm. Nothing that he can do right now. Oh, no, Molan. Oh, look at that. Very aggressive. Coming in, jumps in and forces e Trump back under his turret. Now, Chiron is going to come. He has the blades coming, but it's not going to be a bullseye. Yep. But the beginning of this match, I think it's looking good from the side of Baishou. From the side of GK, obviously. Like Baishou being the very tanky person, the only frontliner from DRG GK. I mean, you do not have enough like hopes for Guy, so Guy is very busy. In this game, he have to make sure like Luban number seven stays alive yes. all the time, and also he needs to, need to initiate. Yeah, <laughs> like, very busy. A man is so 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 busy right now. Like he needs to do everything, everything, and he's the oldest in this whole field. Of course. Again, back into the mid lane. When you're losing track, when you do not have a fixed destination, yep. like moving towards the mid gaining, the wave will be one true thing to do. Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. That's just always the answer, right? Like your wow. answer should always just be like go to the mid. Oh, Chino must be having those very accurate swords, like targeted directly to Baisho. Baisho is brought really, really low, so you have to make retrieval back to the base. We're gonna have to retrieve back, and right now it's going to be the rotation back to mid one more time as yeah. Eastar Pro were able to protect that blue buff for Hua Hai. This is very simple, like butterfly effect. It's, it's since you are lacking one of the frontliners, so you have to make yourself back to the base, which means that you cannot just repeat to do the invasion again, trying to gain the blue from Hua Hai's side. So magically, that Hua Hai, this blue just went back to Hua Hai again. So that's gonna be the, the finish of the invasion from DRGGK. They only got the very first round of the buffs. And starting from now on, 
like Eshar might be returning them this kind of favor by invading into their jungles. Wow! wow the look blue! at that! He uses his ult and takes the blue. Bad news for Pong Pong. Amazing performance by Tiro. Oh, there's nothing bad done by Pong Pong. It's like no. a matter of luck, a matter of predictions, you know? Of course, nothing, nothing that you can do. Like, Tiro nothing has no vision there. It's <laughs> just a try, you know, matter of luck. And he goes in and the damage that is being dealt yep. by the ultimate from Tiro and Dan Gajan and Moria. That could be the, re the only thing that they could just find all the way until the back line of the RGGK. That could be the biggest target. I really hope that this kind of thing happened is not affecting the mentality of Pom Pom because Whoop. getting your blue still 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 in a way like this. Look at that, they have eyes on Pom Pom. Okay. They're coming in, the oh. Forsaken contract takes it and suppress down by Shaw comes in. Zi Yang is still gonna be alive. He wants to reply back, but it's four people that surround the man and not let him go. Perfect rotation and DRGGK is trying to still one man down, securing down with the fire all over there. Oh, but the, the damage, damage is, is not enough. Lethal. Look at Tiro, he wants to run away, but it's not going to be enough. The run comes in from behind and gets revenge back for his mid laner. Like fortunately, fortune news for Team from that final flame. Just just secure the this this kill. Yes. Or otherwise this trade is so uneven. Sad for Pom Pom in there, like they had like the whole Easter Pro had eyes on him. They knew that he was an easy target in there and then surrounded by four people. Like he a, has a difficult day for Pom Pom. A very clear move. It's a of course. like jungler meta. So as long as they have the laning advantages, they're going for you. They're going directly to try and trying to slow down the pace of Pom Pom. Pom Pom will always be the target. Pom Pom always the target right over there, being slowed down. We know that Hua Hai is not going to be the core of this whole Easter Pro composition. Oh. But at the same time, Pompon does not be is not being able just to have the level of advantage that he needs. I mean, there's something that we kept forgetting, neglecting. Like, say the personal goal from Marco Polo, it's completely okay. Yep, of course. Look at that coming in, putting a target on Etron. A guy comes in, but it's late. There are four people, five people from DRDGK, and mm. their goal is going to be this turret. They wanted to take this turret so badly because they were all rushing out to the top, top wild time and get the time to steal away this tier one turret in the bottom lane. Mm. That's, That's a good thing about just having a Ganjin Moya in your composition, right? Like it cleans waves so quickly. I mean, it's not a fair trade. The, the GK does not have the tier one on the top. No, no, no. no. They're just losing one tower. Yeah, that's bad news for them, right? Yep. Like, because at the same time, it just allows one more opening for Guan Yu to come in. And that's the main idea about just playing Guan Yu, just being able to find those openings. And the less turrets that you have, the harder it is going to be for Mongland to, to keep alive. Those turrets standing up, offering the vision to your side, is very important so that we kept talking about how important the tier one in the mid, because you have to make sure you have the tower to protect you enough that you can do the rotations as the mid laners, right? Another invasion here in the blue, while Hua Hai used the might to control the blue and steal it away. Yep, and the go like a The invincible warrior wins. allows him just to come in, proc his ult, and be able just to run away, not only with the prize of the blue bar, but with his life as well. I mean, Fortune DRGGK is really, really trying to stick together, Whoa. trying to gain those towers, mm. right? Like those bodyguards standing side by side, surrounding Mola, trying to make sure this Luma number seven is safe enough and can have those gold earned. Now, Tanran is the one that's going to be the target over there on the bottom lane. Three people rotation around him, as we can see. E-Star Pro right now already with a 1,600 gold advantage in seven minutes and a half. Mm -hmm. But with the sprint available and the ultimate available at the same time, I think Tyran Guan Yu is safe enough just standing yes. like in front of the tower. It's, it's okay. Oh, look at oh, that. Hai taking so much damage, has to broke his ult to, to be able to run away at the same time that we saw e Drone just pushing oh. in the wave on top lane. But I mean, this is like two different strategies. Like e -Star is using 1-3-1 one, one formation, yep. trying to gain themselves like two winning lanes in, into the top and the bottom, which means that even though like DRGK, you are really aggressive standing in the mid, but you are like started to lose some initiative when it comes to those waves rushing into your tier two turret, you have to rush back. 
It's a very typical like uh, countering strategies. Easter Pro knows that the that the key for them to win this game is gonna be the vision that they can provide for Guan Yu to find the right angle back to the backliners. That one through one going against one four, super good. Ah, oh, look at that. One more blue that is going to be for Tyrone. He keeps just controlling those. Pumpkin Hi. cannot see even one. Huahai puts pressure from the back, allowing Yi Jun just to take this turret to one third of its HP. I mean, Yi Jun is really feeling good. Like, this Marco Polo can be everywhere. He's played like a freelancer, but he's going to be there eventually. Oh, the race of cavalry comes in and it's going to be put by Show extremely low. Now it's going to be Huahai, the one that is going to jump. is going to be brought in back. Mongland does not have enough damage, but then it's going to be final. Take it oh. in, out, one-to-one -one trade for both sides. And this time, Hai does not have enough like mm -mm. tankiness yes. to soak in those kind of burst damage from Luba number seven and Qingfeng at the same time. Like he does have his ultimate, right? And his ultimate is going to allow him just to become extremely tanky, but not enough, not enough. That Monglan right now still getting a little bit bigger and bigger and bigger by the minute. Broken Star Maze. Mm. I mean, the strategy remains the same for DRGGK. They just want to make sure the mid lane will be controlled so yeah. that they will have the vision over the river so they can make better moves than E Stars. Mm -hmm. But, like, th this Marco Polo is a sign of danger. Yes. You know, it's well farmed. Mm -hmm. And right now, it seems to me like with those dashes available, th this Marco Polo will be very hard to catch up on. He'll be everywhere. Free gonna, to rotate from the gonna map. It's going to be really hard, and Tyrion is being extremely accurate at the same time. Yep. That is actually the biggest problem right now for... Oh, e oh, DRGK. Look at that. e is going to have to use his ult out of there because he was in fatal danger. One more time, Agai wants to jump in. Gets only onto Yam, but there's going to be Pumper coming in from behind. Look at him. He's not going to do a one versus four. That's like rational, like retrieving back into better decisions. Oh, this is really dangerous. Like Ejin is losing the Purify as a prize for standing up so closely towards the backline from the RGTK. A little mistake made by your side might result badly. Like the RGTK is gaining the full vision. Mulan. Well, one more time, they've got vision, they know exactly where Guan Yu is, so they know that they can step in there. Tyrion being so accurate right now is just a huge threat for DRGGK. Like, if they want to win this thing, like, Tyrion's presence in there is just Look at Guan Yu. a huge flag for Look them. Look at Guan Yu. Like, he wants, to, he wants to run around, but they have eyes on him. Look at that. Monglan. Well, this kind of positioning will make like mm -hmm. GK extremely painful. This, there's no way to go. They cannot go left, they cannot go right. Yep. They can only see how e -Star Pro is trying to use the Tyrant just to invite them, uh -huh. lure them in. They're kind of cornered if the team fight actually goes on. Monlan, no mana. Bad news for him because he won't be able to contest this one. Tyrant is just coming to half of its HP. By show jumps into the fight. They've got eyes on Guan Yu because Pompon can spot him down there. This Tyrant has been going on for such a long time. Tian wants to come. Oh, ah! Mola! Mola being taken extremely low. Wow. And right now, that is the cue for him to get out of there. That will be the ending point for this dragon. That yep. E-Star is basically using this dragon to try, trying to attract their attention, yes. trying to bring themselves up front and joining the team fights. And like DRGK is really struggles a lot, right? Mm -hmm. They're choosing, they're hesitating whether we're going forward, whether they're going directly to the dragons, but they have to make sure that the Duma number seven stays safe, like Ching Fong had the fire. There's so many things they have to pay attention to. So if you hesitate, like in front of E-Star, you're definitely giving themselves those opportunities. They're just trying their very best just to try to keep that mid lane turret. Look They're at really the top lane. They're really trying really hard. Look at the top lane, those waves, those waves. High ground tower it is. High ground tower, e has green light to go in for that one. Nothing that Monglan can do because Master Lupin is not close to him to protect. I mean, one, one lucky news for GK, this is a Marco Polo. Like, Marco Polo yeah. having the least damage mm -hmm. when it comes to tearing down turrets. One more time. 
All right, to finally. finally! Finally, they're gonna take on that one. They spent in total like 13 minutes mm -hmm, mm -hmm. trying to take this tower down. Finally, they did it, make it happen. Now, the problem is this one. When you have a, comp a composition like Guan Yu, having them just being able to protect their high ground is not the one thing that you want. You actually want them to come out. Yep. So yep. losing that turret in there might give you the, the, the opinion, or it might give you the idea mm -hmm. that that is good for DRDGK, but <laughs> yeah. everything has been working their way right now. You can have a clearer picture mm -hmm. of their back lines. Right now, as they're going to start pushing in deeper and deeper, that's going to give Guanyu a lot more options. Oh, uh -huh, using that, the Hai. ultimate. Using the ultimate, but Monglan is still alive. He still has a great possession. The first second Kondra comes in and he takes him down by showing the one that is going to come and reply back. Wow. Monglan, extremely low and still alive. Beautiful combos like DRGGK have the best. Luban pair. Yes. Existing in all whole KPL code AIC. Look at the purest guy used by Monglan. Mm -hmm. Magically make himself alive yes. till this point. How did he survive that? I don't know. He was nailed down by the Forsaken contract and he received all the damage coming in from Tyrone. Let's just watch the replay one more time. I mean, like, Hua is very, very determined to initiate it like this, going directly yep. to the face of Luba number seven. I'm not so sorry, but Ziyang is way out oh. of like this. The ultimate is not like put out. When not he get on the target. When he comes in to, yep. get, to, to get on him, like it's wide, and that's the reason why Monglan is able to survive to that one. Mm -hmm. oh. <sighs> now, look at that. Right now, it's Foshan DRDGK. They completely forgot that 40 minutes ago, everyone was thinking that it was going to end up in a 4 0. And look at them right now, just being the ones that own, owning the whole valley. <laughs> It's like the semifinals all over again, right? <laughs> the semifinals, it's a one to three. Yep. And right now, it's a one to three again. And DRGGK is still, still leading in this game five. If they succeed in winning this, like two, three, the ultimate battle is going to happen. <laughs> Can you imagine? Oh my god. All right, let's go. Monglan is still in a great angle. Guan Yu does not find a position how to rotate around because Pong Pong has eyes on him all the time. Look at where Guan Yu is right now. Very far from the crowd. He cannot be part of the mix right now. Yep. The best like information in Tyran is he is hiding his vision yes. so that DRG can do not dare to go any further or otherwise will be, they will be extremely dangerous. And if you have a Guan Yu in your composition, yeah. you always have hope. You always have all the time. one yes. good team fight will bring you the victory. That's simple. That's the only thing that they need. They just need for Foshan DRGGK just to blink. If they blink once, they're going to give Eastar Pro the option for them to start this. We know from this time on, this Luma number seven will be very difficult trying to tackle down with a pure sky built by himself. And ah! wow, <laughs> the extra shield offered by Agai. All right, the dragon. It's going to be defeated by Marco Polo, so that tyrant is going to go for E-Star Pro. That is the problem, right? Like, Monlan, he might be able just to steal a lot of HP back because he's right now has 13.4k. Like, he is so, so, so built up. But at the same time, the burst damage coming in from Tyrone, it's going to be his biggest, of course, biggest threat. Because it's very hard for Zion to play the Huang Taiyi at this point. We have been talking about this. There's no use for you to try to have your ultimate on to buy. So uh, from this time, 17 minutes, mm -hmm. we only seen like two or three times of the young using yes. the ultimate. It's not that they have no targets. They keep like meeting with one another during the team fights. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. you do not have enough like perfect angle, so he just decided, yeah, I'm the not going to use. The angles have been the problem. Yeah, I'm not going to use ultimate. The angles are the, are the reason. <laughs> <laughs> the angles are the reason why for uh, Tsuyang has been really hard just for him to proc his Forsaken contract every single time. Now oh. let's wait and see what we, what we can do. The rotation right now by Sho, by Sho has eyes on everyone. Tanran comes in, Monglan still Red having a great position. Etron is going to take the turret down, and the target is going to be the red buff right the now. Ma? One more time, Tsuyang comes in, but it's going to be wide. 
Monland still alive. He's still in damage. Team Fun with the fire is going to try to push Easter Pro back. Like flash trading to flash. From now on, what like Easter should be doing is like make good use of the poking from Marco Polo. Like Marco Polo have the red all the time. Yes. Like use your first of all, like, using your bullets, trying to make sure that the frontliners, the HP bar will not be full, ready for the battle of the dragons, right? And Tyran managing the waves all the time, going to the top, going to the mid, going to the bottom, trying to offer the entire like team like better laning, better waves. It's just like the way that we are seeing this match right now. You do not have one team that is fully controlling everything. Like you poking. see, Eastar Pro is being able to control the vision. Mm -hmm. Like they've got most of the map under their control. But at the same time, in all the times that they're starting to fight against Foshan DRGGK, they're not being able just to take on that last push, oh. that last hit that could give them the trophy. Like Eternity Blade will be the final, final weapon like Ejen choose to play, like to maximize mm -hmm. the burst damage. They want to kill this Luban number seven within seconds. Because one more second you hesitate on this kill, you might be like countered back, yes. fighting back. You do not want to underestimate the damage from Luban number seven, especially in the late game. And let's see the time, like nearly 20 minutes. Those damage, hard to handle. Yeah, nobody's going to be able to contest that sh Shadow Overlord, and then it's going to go uncontested. Oh. And we're moving 30 seconds away from the Tempest Dragon. Fully decked out with no boots, but a Succubus Cloak available for Mulan. Yeah, it's true. Like, w if you're playing Luba number seven, you don't need to move. No. Nope. <laughs> so nope. you don't need to waste, a, like, room for the Who boots. Who needs no boots? A <laughs> man is barefoot going around. They've got eyes on Tyran. It's going to be initiated oh! from back in. They want to deal the damage, trying to make this a power play, but it's going to be Tsuyan, the one that is going to save his life. Eton has a great angle. He's going to be spotted by Paisho. He needs to check on that bush. Yep. He comes in and finds out Eton. And 20 minutes tells us that the Tempest Dragon is online, ladies and gentlemen. Who is going to be the master of the Tempest Dragon? Let's wait and see. Let's wait and see. Everyone's got their ultimates available right now. Oh. This could be the fight that could decide everything. Pong Pong already has eyes on the Tempest Dragon. Look at Zia, look at Zia! Getting closer to the 107 and getting the ultimate off Can to the target! Him out, but he's not gonna be available, Mon Lang is still alive! He's gonna flash away, has a great angle, come in one more time! Bye he's show. gonna resurrect, comes in, pulls out! Now it's gonna be Agai, the one that's gonna come. They've got eyes on Zia. This is going to be that. Only Team Fung fell, they've got the Tempest Dragon as well! No, 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 let's wait and see what will be the result for this match. They have a wave ahead of it, but Marco Polo and Kai will be remaining alive, and Marco Polo have no ultimate. Will they be able to fit it the wave right now? It's gonna be the Minions coming in, Huaha is gonna be pushed back. They are it's gonna pushing be coming the in for the Crystal. They're pushing in, one touch, two touches, three touches. Oh! Game six, we're going on, ladies and gentlemen. We are live. First time the RDGK take one more victory. That's the miracle that we talk, keep talking about. You have to push yourself to the very limits. Limitation <laughs> is there, waiting for it to be breaking apart. Congratulations again for the RDGK. They are on the process of making the impossible possible again. They so that light at the end, and this place, ladies and gentlemen, is going to explode. Oh, this night is going to be legendary. <laughs> <laughs> this place is on fire, ladies and gentlemen. Listen to that. The audience loves what they're seeing. E-Star Pro had it in their hands, and right now, they're just slowly, slowly, slowly just giving one more opportunity for Foshan DRGGK to force this to a seventh game. Just imagine, like, the truth, yeah. the very truth that Ezar is still leading, yeah. they're like leading, they have three points while like GK have two. Of course. But the whole thing, the whole situation, the whole mentality, the whole like confidence mm -hmm. will be like completely opposite. But you see, like, like when, 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 the, when the first game finished, we dropped a question right over there and we said, what does Eastar Pro need to do right now? The problem in, in, in a fight is that you might be just dealing all the punches and you're the one that is always hitting and hitting and hitting, just sending your opponent against a corner. But in the moment that you put corner a boxer, mm -hmm. a boxer just needs to hit one on you and then you're gonna fall down. Yep. 
E-Star Pro does not want to give Fushan the RDGK just the confidence, just for them to put their hands up and then just go straight up for their chin. E-Star Pro might not have that strong a chin and they might not be able just to come to support, to survive that. You know, I started thinking that they realize how to play the best, yeah. like, um, of this composition mm -hmm. too late. Because you can see, they have, like, a longer range. They have Ganja Moya and Marco Polo at the same mm -hmm. time. It's a very old-fashioned, like, poking abilities, right? Poking combos. You have to make good use of the po poke it instead of just going directly, trying to force something to happen, you know? <laughs> yes, yes, you yes. have longer range. You don't want to, like, get in touch, like, standing closely with one mm -hmm. another mm -hmm. and trying mm -hmm. to th do those very shorthand like, range and team fights. It's not um, a better solution. Of course. Should be, like, find and they found out and developed. I think that the main problem in here for Easter Pro in this game was that they could never find a right angle for Zian to jump in. Yep. The only one time that happened was in this last fight. Mm -hmm. But then the, the Forsaken contract comes in and then the damage is not immediate right after that. Yes, they're able just to come in and just to kill Master to kill Lupin number seven once. But in the moment that, that Lupin number seven stands up one more time, half of Eastar Pro had already been killed. Well, speaking of true god in the late game, the marksman, mm. the only, like, the only character and hero who can fight against the number seven will be Hoi. Yes. With no doubt. Like Marco Polo, <laughs> and not even a marksman. The late game is speaking of the damage. Like, the angle is perfect for Zion. That's lasting fight, mm -hmm. using the actual Howling Emblem by himself mm. to get in touch, trying, trying to initiate. But the fact that you're seeing the Saka Bus Cloak is there, the chain is there, like, the other like support items are there trying to make sure like Mengland stay alive all the time. Mengland was just vital in that one. Like he was just the core. He just was like the light of hope that Foshan DRGGK just needed in there. I was a little bit worried about Mongland, right? Because his performance with Gunsun Leon game one was not the best. So I was a little bit hesitant about just like putting the spotlight on the man for this such a vital game five. Yep. And I do believe that he's the reason why we're forcing all the way this to a game six. You know, for the last one, or no, for the next one. Yeah. If, like, E Star is not putting those priority onto Zhou Yu, mm -hmm. or otherwise, they will be gonna showing us a surprising pick. Yeah. The very limited choice when it comes to mid laners. Yes. Like, Chino has used a lot, like, mm -hmm. Mashini will be his first pick, mm -hmm, even mm -hmm. though he used, like, Zhou Yu to be the millionaire for one time. Yes. The remaining hero pools are still very limited. And we are like watching those very targeted bands from Foshan, the RGGK, mm. Gong Sun Li and Shen Meng Shi all taken away, right? And they're, not, and they're not gonna allow them in game six. Yes. I'm so sorry, like they're not gonna allow that and then throw you is gonna be the option for Wuhan E-Star Pro. And not to mention that they still have Lu Ban available for their own. Yeah. Like uh, E-Star, right? E-Star. But, they like, could just reply back with the exact same composition Ganjang that the Moye. DRG, mm -hmm. DRGGK just used. Yeah, the MVP definitely awarded to the one true god in the late <laughs> game because the damage, the damage, look at the stats, it's amazing. Like 51.3%. <laughs> half of the, everyone's damage. Over half, please. Over half. Over half. Amazing performance by Mongland. Thank you very much, Mongland, for just, just showing us this game five and sending us all the way to game six. Thank mm. you very much. Like, what's really amazing is the damage taken. You mm. know, he's not like standing in the back lines and doing those very safe damage to the frontliners. This I one mean, right over here, <laughs> I really thought that Monglan was down. He's going down, right? He's going down. I really thought that, but in the moment that the Forsaken contract comes in, then Ziyan was already extremely low. Yep. Look at this one, one more time. Like, Ziyan just with the Howling Emblem comes in and finds Monglan's angle. How, comes in suppressed, but there's no immediate damage after that. Yeah, that was the that, that was the main problem. They were not they were unable to kill him in that moment. Yes, the resurrection in there, but then Pom Pom has already finished the 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 Tempest Dragon. Nothing, not nothing that Easter Pro could have seen. They were just fighting two completely different fights at the same time. I mean, Luban. Duel is not very difficult, uh, not very easy mm -hmm. to master because you need to stand in a frontliner position for yes. Luban number seven mm -hmm. while 
you're extremely vulnerable when it comes to HP lines, right? Of course. So it requires a lot of time trying, trying to master this kind of duel. And Agai, together with Monglan, will be the best ones. Oh, this is really something. Like, best Oof. ones using this kind of duel performed in the whole KIC and whole KBL. Well, I would give the MVP right now to Monglan. I completely agree on that. Yep, of course. But you got to understand that without Agai's performance, <laughs> On that Master Lupin, Monglan would have would not have even a chance to survive. One hundred percent of the team fight participation. That's the answer. Whenever that there was a fight, there was an Aga. <laughs> Sometimes I think that we only have one spot for for the MVPs mm -hmm. is really a shame. Because, you know, sometimes the the reason you win in a battle is because you five stuck in together yeah. as a group. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You perform better than your opponents. Look at the gold in there. It was a roller coaster. I love seeing roller Lillet. coasters. Oh, it's just look at that. It goes up and it comes down. And it goes up and it comes down. And oh, wow. You that, know, was that was such an electrifying game. You know, from this time on, even though that E Star is leading in the scores, mm -hmm. but I think they are the one who started to feeling more worried, feeling more anxious because, you know, being chased back with two points and losing with those of competition that you find the most comfortable mm -hmm. and confident with will be a huge like disaster, a huge blow to your whole confidence. You do not want to give them the option just to push it to a game seven. Yep. You make it to game seven is just a coin in the air. It could be for any of the two of them. So Wuhan Easter Pro, they thought that they could just finish this in four. And right now they just push all the way until six. Let's wait and see what's going to happen in the next one. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for still being online, still being with us. Game five is finished. We're going to game six. So if you want to just keep out in there on the edge of your seats, the same as us, follow us right after this short break.
Do you believe in miracles? I do. I always do. That's the, that's the main thing that you need to believe in right now. Because believe it or not, this amazing story, this amazing book of the KIC 2022 that we've been written, we've been writing this book since the beginning of the qualifiers. The qualifiers took us to America, took us to Africa. They took us around Asia. And we're coming to the end of the book. And in the end of the book, you have these two teams that they're fighting just to be the last victor in this whole story. Is Oop. it going to be for Shandy or DGK that they're going to force this to a magical final battle? Or is it going to be E-Star Pro, the ones that they're going to finish this, give that last push and make their eighth trophy? We work in the eSports industry like miracle is what we live for. Mm -hmm. They're our energy. That's the reason why we insist this kind of dreams. We already like standing here, the host, the casters, all the audiences, we always have those passion. Yes. Like hiding in front of us, like inside of us. And right now, thank you for all the players, like better movements and better performances. Finally, we're witnessing the dreams going, going becoming true, right? Like they are actually getting their goals like when you when you walk around here and then you just look at the faces of the audience you can see it in both sides the, the audience the fans of Oshan DRGGK they have those eyes full of hope just hoping and waiting that this is going to happen for them and yeah. those fans from Wuhan Eastar Pro on the other side you can see in their eyes that they start just looking at each other they look left they look right and they just ask that one question that nobody wants to ask us, is this even possible? You know, there's definitely going to be those regrets if you lose in this grand final. Yeah. Because you have to make it so far to the grand final, you definitely want to take the trophy back. But if it ends in a like score like 3-4, or oh, like, yeah, like, just put it like this, mm -hmm. like the ultimate battle, there's nothing that you can possibly be feeling regret because you have already did your grades, like the best job you can possibly do. Okay, look at that. <laughs> that's how it's going to be the ban. Lu Bu is going to be the ban. Gung Sun Lee needs to be the ban, and that's going to allow Wuhan Eastar Pro to get their hands on Shen Meng Shi. Shen and that would Gung give Sun. for Shan DRGK Meng Tian. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ah. Oh, right, I love this. You're always going to be figuring out one solution because you have Ching Rong as a mid laner for your team, but you have to make sure that you get the, those most Byron? meta heroes here. Byron? Oh, they are going for this. Like GK are so determined for those aggression moves, oh, those gosh. team fights in the early game, those cornered skirmish happened on either the, of the lanes. So Wuhan Star Pro is going to be able to take both. Meng Tian and Shen Meng Xi. You use fights to go against fight, like fist to fist. You don't like show, like get intimidated by the fact that your opponent is mm -hmm. choosing this kind of compositions. Wow, great one. Wow. Combining all the remaining meta heroes together within one. They're so determined. We're gonna end this one. Yeah. We're gonna end tonight. They need to finish this whole thing. They're going to find Meng Ya for Meng Lan. Mm -hmm. And then after you have that one in there, you, you already can see the four bands of, of the next one. <laughs> Sunbin is going to be a band. Lupin number seven is going to be another band. Sunbin will definitely need it to be taken into consideration because you do not, from the side of Wuhan, you mm -hmm. do not want like DRG to have a Sunbin making this whole yeah. very aggressive composition mm -hmm. moving faster. No. You Shemulsi, don't want that happening. Again, since like Shemulsi is not going to be the picked, final pick. So if Lupin number seven is not an option for Wuhan Easter Pro, you know? what do you think it's going to be? Is it going to be a Garo? Yes. Garo is a yeah. perfect choice. I would say I would say Garo with the range that Garo can have. Of course. What the protection that Master Lupin can, can give, that's going to be a huge problem for Team Fon because Team not because for Monlan, because Monlan is not going to have a chance to actually just be in front of Garo. I mean, DRGK is basically forcing Eastar to choose Garo as their marksman. Oh, Angela! <laughs> like the same formula works like just like Ganja Moye and yeah. burst the Wontai. Burst, burst damage. damage. And it's a lock! 
<laughs> and the stadium is going crazy! Because I'm sorry, you have to have those early game and mid game burst damage because you're choosing Garo as your marksman. Garo is a very heavily like item dependent marksman. You need to give Egypt a lot of time yes. to do the farming. So who is responsible for the burst damage? Chingro answers the question by standing up, raising his hand. I did. <laughs> but you, but you see, I'm like, the one. The one the one thing that we need to talk about in here is that each round right now on that Garo, uh -huh. if we are able to make it all the way, let's say 18, 19 minutes, with the damage that that Garo can start dealing at that moment. On top of that, you've got Master Lupin and you've got Monkian as your frontliners, and you always have the damage that can come from that Hua Hai's Jin. This composition for Easter Pro does not look like a Game 6 composition. <laughs> this is so OP. <laughs> That's a, like the benefit you got when you're leading in the first half. Yeah. You know, saves you from a lot of heroes. Mm. Just remember, rewind for a little bit like the, the hero that Hua Hai used before for the very previous three games. Yeah. Those like Yao or Akai or something like yeah, that. Yeah. Not a matter of, like, like Lam will be used in as in the fifth or the fifth one, the fourth one or fifth one. Yes. They're yes, leaving yes. a lot of very good picks for the future. And, you know, it's very easy to understand for Sandy RDGK's competitions. I mean the weakness is very obvious. Yes. Like the Yukio touch banana together with Byron. The longest range of the attack of the damage will be Chingfeng's ultimate. Those swords are extremely important when they were trying to target on Angelo or otherwise this Garrow. But, but then just jumping in there just allows Hua Hai just to have of course. So, so many different targets. Of course. And speaking of initiations, like E-Star have Luban and Meng, uh, Meng Tian at the same time. Those frontliner is going to be the bodyguards, body shielding the backliner to a rather safer like environment. So that's all. The RGGK just giving whatever they can possibly think of and trying to piece this up a little bit. The early and the mid game will be extremely important for the RGGK. There's Listen no late the game. Audience. There's no late game for them. I would just put it right there. There is no tomorrow. This is game six, ladies and gentlemen. We will either move all the way until the ultimate battle, or this is going to be it, and Easter Pro is going to take their eighth trophy. Oh, Tiro is doing those very aggressive moves, and unfortunately missed the target. Wait, what? Wait, what? Pum Pum comes in. He's oh, trying, but blood. what is that? He's just allowing first blood to go to Easter Pro. Oh, that's a sign of danger for DRGGK. They have to rush back for a little bit. He saw, he saw Tzu Yang coming in. He got vision on him and he still tried to come in and try to take the kill. And not to mention, we have this early game before four minutes. The jungle have the self-protection system. Your damage is going to be deducted for a little bit. Not the best way to start for Pom Pom one more time, and that's going to be bad news for Pai Shou. Yep. Because that means that whenever that Meng Tian is going to make it to level four, mm -hmm. and they're going to come and target Pai Shou, Pom Pom is not going to be able to support him in that fight. Yeah, oh, this blue is brought very low, but fortunately went to the side of Pom Pom. Pom Pom is not losing the buffs, but obviously E Star is making quicker moves and when it comes to rotations. Okay, look at that. Right now, Taran is already on level, level four. four. One By show level needs ahead. to clean this wave quickly and get out of there. You know, if you want to invade, just make sure like Baisho stick with you together. Yes. You do not want to do those solo invasions because your damage will be deducted quite heavily. So if you really wanted to have this blue, I can understand this, but make sure you're surrounded by your members. Of course. Yeah. Like, why would you try to be the hero at one minute of the game? And this kind of first, uh, first, first like, first scale is costly for GK yeah. because their composition only thrive in the early mm -hmm. and the mid game, and if you're losing this. This is gonna, this is gonna just gonna put to them in a very passive, yep. in a very, very, very passive position for the next four minutes minimum. You're gonna be suffering from bad decisions. All right, let's keep moving up with the game. Look at that, Taran comes in. Joins in the mid lane fight. So yeah, and spots on Monland right now is going to be Pump the one that is going to be initiated. Blazing Brilliance comes in, but the damage is still very early in the game. It's not going to be enough. Yeah, 
Because it, it, it was immediately followed by only the ultimate. Sometimes yes. you need to combine the second one and the first ability together so that like Angela's burst damage will be maximized. Of course. Yeah. Of course. Like but there's no time, right? No. There's, there's no time. <laughs> it's still early in the game. The cooldown for those two abilities is yeah. still like pretty long. Now Eastar Pro has their eyes on that blue buff. Monglan still has a very good angle. Team Fong is going to force them back. Pompon is going to come in to protect his blue. You know what got, no matter what kind of a gaming place like Ezar is trying to do right there, yep. the only target and purpose for them is trying to have those numbers taken to around 20, around 18, and that's enough. All right, Pai Shou is being surrounded by three. Tyrone is going to join in as well. Pai that's Shou. going to be the young generals that is going to be progged by Tyrone. And it's going to be taken by Shou one more time down. Another kill back to Angela. Like, Chinro is gaining two kills over there. Alt, oh, bottling, something Pong happens. Pong is going to force Idron just to use his flash and to flash out of that situation. And the right RGGK. now, he's going to have their, gonna have priority for this turret. They're rushing to the bottom, trying to make sure that they can have the tier 1 tour in the bottom lane, but unfortunately it's not happening. And let's see where Hua ha is, getting another set of little jungles away and mm -hmm. sharing solely all the experiences in the gold, by the way. Like, he just needs to come in and take the Firehawk. I mean, this is the secret of becoming rich. Yes. You are farming up all the time. You do not waste even one second, like, doing nothing. He's, like, building and building and buying those items he needed. That's why he's got the highest gold per minute. Mm -hmm. 804. Oh, wow. guys, he's gonna have to proc his ult. But that's gonna buy them enough time to try to take that turret down. That turret Red is team. already in vanished. And Aga's ultimate is going to go and cool down, and that's a long cool down. And this red, Ching Fong is trying his best, trying to secure down, but the sm with the smite available, it's an easy attack for Hua Hai. Yeah, it is an easy one for Hua Hai. Mm -hmm. Nothing that he can do. The one thing that Ching Fong needs to try to do is just to be the same accurate as Ching Rong was in the previous game, right? Yep. Like, Ching Rong was able just to control every single blue buff from Foshan DRGGK. Now let's see if right now Team Fong can have the exact same performance in here. All right, coming in, the damage comes, and it's going to be the Master Lupin, the one that is going to fall. A guy cannot stand because he does not have his ulti available. And he's going to be the Blazing Brilliance one more time, wow. taking one more kill. This is not looking good for the GK. Oh, like they pretty much by show, looks at that. It's going to be stopped in there by the Fireball. And the mid lane turret is going to fall. No, 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 no. They used up every single one they have. They used a primal portal. They gave up the tier one turret. They gave up all the things remaining in the top lane. They gave up the tier one turret in the mid, trying to make sure they can have secure one, like one kill down. One kill down. Yeah. It's not an even trade. Nope, not, and not, they're not. losing the tier one turret in the mid. It's really, really hurtful for their composition. Of course, that's going to be really difficult for yep. Team Fong right now. And not to mention, the only kill they have is it was a Yang. support. It's a support. Mm -hmm. Nothing that they could have done in that one. And right now, they're going to trade both top and bottom turrets. Both teams right now being extremely careful. The RGGK comes in, the speed boost comes, and the only thing that they can find is a support. Yeah. And then Chiron just holds him there with the fireball and the blazing brilliance. Look at that, Monlan is the ta next target. He's going to be resurrected. Can he deal more damage? It's not going to be that. Tyran is going to fall right now. It's going to be two from the next. It's going to be the next target. Look at Pompon just receiving damage from Tyran that is going to be tanking up. And nothing, nothing, nothing that the RGGK can do right now. And you can see every single team fight is not initiated from the side of E-Star. You can mm -hmm. see the position they set up for the entire game. That Tyran stays in the top forever, stays in the mid forever, trying to take in the towers. Which means that the E-Star is not looking oh! for those team fights, but Garo went down for a little bit. Garo, it disappears. Pumpo wants one more kill, Angela. but then it's going to be with the fireball. Oh. Team Fun cannot survive. That hurts. Him. Oh, he wants to save him, but it's not gonna be enough. That really hurts, like, even though it cost the life of Egypt, but they have two more kills in return. You already took the Garo, man. Just go back. He didn't need to go for Master Lupin. Well, sometimes when you're so excited, you will be acting like this. I'm so sorry, but DRGGK members, just stay calm. Make better decisions. You are like staying between live or death and yes. trying to be responsible for what's going to happen later on. Look at that, like he jumps in, 
He gets the one kill that he needed. He can go. That's it. You can leave. Why do you want to just go and just force it to try to get on, on your support? Exact same thing that happened in the first minute of the game. Something is happening down there, happening on the top lane, those skirmishes. And right now, like, DRGGK is still choosing to use the same strategies. Five surrounding, forcing into the team fights, using the maximum amount of damage, trying, trying to steal one more kill. Every but single time that they are able to just kind of pull in anyone, it's any person that they can pull in, any person that Master Lupin can get his chains on is going to be a win. Because it's going to be either one of the four core players or it's going to be Aga, and then Aga is going to have to use his ultimate. You know, the saddest information is that, like, he just stays alive all the time. Yeah. He's having yeah. those waves only by himself. So the Scarrows, they save and sound Yes. to this point. Up until right now, if Garo just keeps going like this, let's not say 16, 17 minutes. Give her five more minutes and yep. then that Garo's damage is going to be fully online. Yes. Two that. complete items ready. Shadow Ripper and the Endless Edge. Eternity Blade. Taran has eyes on them. And getting ready to the Doomsday. Once the Doomsday is going to be there, I mean, HP recovery and those damage to the tanks. Wow, oh, look at that. Moonlight is just being surrounded. Unstoppable by Show is going to disappear. Look, look at, at Tyran. that. Tyran is just sucking in so much damage. Nothing that Moonlight can do to try to avenge by Show. 20 invincible. seconds power play for Easter Pro. You know, Easter is setting Ejen as a bait on the bottom lane while the, those very precious time they're giving it to Tyran, they're giving it to Hua Hai. Mm -hmm. So that's like check the personal gold. Like Ejen is not leading that hugely, but if you see like Hua Hai personal gold are like 7,000 already. Like ready to do a lot of challenges. Yeah, of you can see like how many damage like Tyran solo like taken up there, soaking in like a soap or something. That's why nobody wanted just to allow this monkey to get in the game. Oh. So tanky and so much and such a great amount of damage that he can deal as well. I think DRGGK is choosing the wrong target. Yep. Yep. Choosing the wrong target it is. Look at that. Tyran is being taken extremely low. But Tyran has still a great alive. angle. Wait for Pompo. Look at that. Everyone is just disappearing. Nothing that anyone can do. Wow. Five. Stood up and took the last kill. The turrets are going to fall. The what is are going running to happen? In. Look at Team Fong. I'm making sure that Ching Fong cannot just go back. They're sending three of their members trying to clean the way, trying to get closer to the high ground towers. Look at that. It's going to be only Pompo on the last hope. He needs to go back, needs to buy five more seconds for Pai Show to come in. It could be this! It could be this, ladies Isar, and gentlemen! Isar. The ballista is coming in! in. The way to rush it in! Easter Pro! Becoming the final 2022 Honor of International Championship final champions! The champions of our KIC 2022 Wuhan! Easter Pro! Pro! Finally becoming the ruler of the year of 2022. Becoming who is dominating the entire year. Easter Pro will be the answer. It is just a great, amazing, evening for every single person watching this game. Believe it or not, the whole stadium is on their feet because this man brought these boys together and they are going to be able to put their hands on that precious trophy that they really wanted to have. This will be the beginning of the era, but continues to be the beginning of the entire generation with the name of Wuhan. E-Star Pro. Pro! Congratulations to the Blues! This is it, ladies and gentlemen. We present you your champions. Enjoy it the same as we are enjoying it right now. Everyone has smiles from side to side in their faces because they've worked hard. They have worked hours. They have done their job. And they came in and they were able to defeat a gigantic opponent like for Shandy RGGK.
We are always going to remember the year of 2022, where Isha Pro will be the only remaining team shining through all the way out.梦之路未曾止步，他们又汗水凝聚胜利，他们又实力告诉所有人：武汉E-Star 静态签名信物售价八十二点券一真，他把一真。一真，他把一真。一真，他把一真。一真，他把一真。一真，他把一真。一真，他把一真。一真，他把一真。一真，他把一真。一真，他把一真。一真，他把一真。一真，他把一真。一真，他把一真。一真，他
It is going to represent the connections that I have with my friends, the connections that I have with my teammates, and the fun, the fun and the amazing times that I am having here. Once you said, like, we are the legendary body, so what do you want to say to your teammates and all the audiences? Every single victory it comes from all different angles and from all different experiences for every single person that has been here. So I want to say thanks to everyone. You have your very first KIC champion three years ago, and right now, after three years of hard work, and you manage to gain yourself once more. How do you feel? The greatest experience has been just in this one year and a half. Of, we've participated in six finals and we've taken five trophies and one sec second place. So I want to say thanks to all the persons that have been there with us. How do you value the victory for the entire team? The victory is just because we've been working all together for this one year and a half and we're expecting just that everything is going to keep going and I believe that we did not just say any, any regrets for anyone. And you have your signatures during in our game, what do you mean by it? That will be the meaning <coughs> representing the whole team, our whole spirit. <laughs> You're like the whole ESR team is never absent from any single grand finals. How do you evaluate the whole performance through the entire year for ESR? I would give full points for everyone, full scores, because not only the bosses, but the whole team and the whole club, it has been the goal that we had for us to finish this 2022, just to be able to finish this championship. Do you have some unfinished wishes and goals for the future? I felt inspired by my teammates, by my family, by the help that I've been able to have during this 2022. And thanks to Wuhan Eastar Pro. I want just all of us to come in together, huddle up one more time, and let's call it for Eastar Pro. Fishhandle
适合冠军战队合影留念，我们一起记录下这美好的瞬间。同时也请冠军队伍向大家展示这份专属于冠军的荣耀。感谢张华女士，请您步台下继续观影，谢谢。在这样一个激动人心的时刻，我们即将揭晓的是今晚的最后一个，也是最重要的那个悬念了。本届世冠王者荣耀 KC， 他的 SMVP 到底会是谁呢？我相信大家心中已经有了一个名字，对吧？ All right, ladies and gentlemen, the final MVP. Let's see who's going to take it. The 2022 Honor of Kings International Championships Grand Final Final MVP, Wuhan Easter Pro, Huai. 腾讯互娱、天美 LED 工作室、全球电竞发展中心总经理、王者荣耀电竞总负责人张一嘉先生为花海颁发 FMVP 奖杯，有请。再次恭喜花海，有请张一嘉先生和我们的 FMVP 花海合影留念。Share with us how do you feel holding this trophy as an FMVP for 2022 KIC? This is a great moment after playing all these years. This makes me feel extremely satisfied about my performance. 这是奖励，现在有什么初步的想法吗？Do，还有什么想法吗？好不容易拿一个，我觉得有必要深思熟虑一下。有必要深思熟虑一下，我们也给花海更多的时间，好吗？After taking this one trophy，I'm just gonna
，一定凝聚了所有工作人员的辛勤的努力付出。所以在这个时候，也让我们有请俱乐部的所有随行人员一同上台，共同捧杯吧！武汉 i s t a r Pro， 有请。在过去这一个多月的时间里，从选拔赛走到今天的总决赛，有数不清的名场面，也有一个又一个动人的故事。相信这些都会镌刻在你我的记忆中。感谢来到现场以及守候在屏幕前的每一位观众朋友们，感谢你们的陪伴。本次王者荣耀世界冠军杯 KIC 总决赛也将落下帷幕，各位召唤师们，我们明年再会。